welcome to session 15 of Outlander's Guide to Lidoria. We're all here already. Hi! Woo! Hello! 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 I've already asked about everyone's week. So, we're so you ready. don't get to hear it. Actually, <laughs> you only asked them about my week. I asked about yours and Austin's. Uh, which shows a clear preference uh, on my part. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Uh, why is it not showing? There we go! Hello! There's the table. Um, <clears throat> something is different here. What is what? it? <laughs> <What's going? laughs> my overlay is different. Do we different. have to find it? <laughs> Um. <laughs> hmm. I'm Interesting. Looking. Yeah, like I have the names of everyone over their pictures for some reason in top left, which is new. I did not set that up. But that works. <laughs> <laughs> sure, we can go with that. Uh, all right. So, um, our victim of the day is Austin, who needs to summarize for us a session that he did not attend. Yeah! I'm prepared. I am going to throw you into the swimming pool and you gotta figure out how to swim. That's great, because I can't. Alright, so... All I have to go off of is having listened to the session a couple of times while doing housework and, and playing uh, video games and stuff. Uh, and it's been, it's been a busy couple of weeks for me. You know, I just finished performing in a Shakespeare play. So I've got all that beautiful Shakespearean verse in my head. So uh, <laughs> I decided my quirk for today would be writing my entire recap in iambic pentameter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, the best, the best thing. <laughs> let's let's see how this goes. The metal ravens looked for Jamuel. Their beaks found him in the professor's bag. So with a breath, professor roared at them, and bodies burst and blew apart anon. Outside, upon their metal flesh, inscribed the letters O T H. What does it mean? The man inside the book doth hate the birds. Machines are not his friend. So they left thus, to reach the inn in which the party slept. Then roaring as lions do, he woke the group. And that's when I gave up writing in the Because <laughs> <in Denver, laughs> it took too long. <laughs> so, so I decided to do impressions instead. <clears throat> <clears throat> the metal birds have found us. They, they tried to take... J uh, hold on, let me take my headphones off. <laughs> can't hear myself. They tried to take Jamuel, which I find to be quite precocious, rambunctious, a squiddly diddly umptious thing to do. <clears throat> <clears throat> I sense danger in these lands. As my mother always said, we should make like a banana and split. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are indubitably in great danger, but I need to talk to a dragon first because that sounds quite spectacular, so we can't leave. <clears throat> well, and don't forget. Oh, wait, this is Talix. <clears throat> <clears throat> Well, uh, and, and don't forget, everyone, that we also agreed to help mediate this situation with the Atari Philly. <clears throat> mm, fine. But the next morning, I will make like a branch and leave. <clears throat> then Brooke says, None of us should be alone right now that we are searching. For I can't do it, Brooke. <laughs> they are searching for us. We should what stick together. <laughs> That's, I mean, we should yeah. stick together. <laughs> Strength in numbers. Squeak, squeak! Oh, sorry, those were my guinea pigs. <laughs> and then... <laughs> <laughs> and then I ran out of time to write impressions, so, so I figured, hey, why not make a game show out of it? So I turned it into a game show. Jason, your question is... 
Wait. After we went to the colony of Atarafili, Fiust, the leader of the group, explained that the Ezen experience a sudden, unpredictable death when they reach the end of their lifetime. What is the word in Ezen fair that was used to describe this? Uh, what is... This is Austin's summary, not mine, so I'm not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> That's incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is Sived. Yeah, obviously. Sid! What's oh, up? God. Your question is Sarabeth, priest of the lion, said that she would be willing to let the Atara Philly leave under what conditions? To learn the means of which uh, the Pax is real cause of death. That is correct. And also, if they were willing to uh, to put themselves under some sort of truth spell so that she could know the truth. Oh, Winther! What? Me? I'm the DM! Your question is... <laughs> when we investigated the infirmary, Brooke and Tekka discovered something burning, and it was death biscuits. True or uh false? <laughs> <laughs> False. It is called a death hibiscus. Ah, correct. <laughs> you are furiously scratching out something and writing another thing. <laughs> That's what <laughs> it was. <laughs> Dennis! Hibiscus. Yeah. Your question is Are you ready? Mm, yeah. My notes are. How ready. are you feeling today? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I paid attention earlier, but I think I said pretty decent. <laughs> Incorrect! What the heck? You feel like crap. <laughs> oh. Matt. Oh no. Anyone else feeling a Your question sense is... of dread? <laughs> what is the rest of the recap? <laughs> uh, what is the end? I wish! <laughs> I'm trying to help you! <laughs> the answer is after <laughs> after investigating the infirmary they went back to the Atara camp and then they spoke with Turk the last man to have seen Pax alive and then they learned that on the night of Pax's death his sister had broken up with something called Zal who left the camp and was chased down by Turk after a fight they were found by a gnome guard who took them to Pax the two of them were nursed back to health and then left the infirmary Zal <clears> left <throat> the colony for good while Turk returned to the other Atari filly at some point another fight broke out this time between Turk and Fused which You're led to Fused heading to the infirmary Shh, 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 don't say that! Which led to Fuse heading to the infirmary and finding Pax's body. That's, That's when he mobilized his people to take the course and make sure... He didn't even write his own damn summary! <laughs> <laughs> Absolute genius! To, to take the corpse on. and make sure the colonists wouldn't desecrate it. Wow, I'm very impressed. Yeah, good writing there, Austin. The accuracy is incredible. I can't awesome. believe we did that. this. <laughs> Luckily, I Luckily, have... Luckily, you don't have to give him inspiration. Yeah, I have the last <laughs> laugh because you already have inspiration. Oh. However, however, um, I noticed that before the before the session started. I didn't started, get a chance to use it last and I, session. Yeah, and I thought to myself, you know what? Let's change things, and from now on, if somebody does a summary and they already have like inspiration from the previous one, uh, we can just give it to somebody of their choice. <gasps> yes, I have I like to choose. <laughs> Who's Who your favorite, Austin? Okay, Matt doesn't have one, and Jason doesn't have one. Okay, Rollies, you have to do a roll off. All right, each of you roll a, d a d20. <clears throat> Let's go. You have no highest chance. gets, <laughs> highest gets the, the <laughs> inspiration. You have no chance. The odds are in my favor. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I am very proficient in these things. Does anyone want to use their inspiration for that? <laughs> <laughs> Give a free roll. Can I? Can I? I, I don't know. Winther, I feel bad. Can I split it in half and give them both a D10? <laughs> Too late. <laughs> I don't think that would be very useful. <laughs> it's very 
Oh my Just save it from a natural one! It's, it's a shield! <laughs> that would be an interesting idea. <laughs> For like a, just a really crappy inspiration. <laughs> I feel like that's what I deserve. <laughs> All right. I can't believe Take it turned to my own. I appreciate it. A 20 pipspiration. He took my own summary, <laughs> used my summary against me. Only the last paragraph. <laughs> you underestimate <laughs> his power. Were you worried when on the day of the session the, the recap wasn't ready yet? I was very thankful, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> if only you were as prepared as I was. Oh! oh. <laughs> it worked out though. You got through okay. it. Okay. Yeah, I had a rough week. Oh. <laughs> meow meow, Maya, what's up? I need to turn uh, this off. <laughs> is that another cat? That is very yeah. much a cat. <laughs> That's a very uh, operatic cat. I am back. Back oh. from what? Did you not read what I wrote in chat? Come <laughs> no. On. I missed the whole recap. <laughs> no, no, I didn't miss it. I, I, I only missed the, I mean, I answered my question. How did I miss the whole recap? <clears throat> Sorcery. Oh, oh my goodness. <clears throat> I I love how these re recaps always put me in a great mood. Peril. Oh. It, oh. <laughs> okay. So um Last the time party. We had question. Yes, the party stands before two Etara Philly. The last man to see Pax alive. And the first person to find her dead, Fust and Tirk, uh, in the opposite order. <laughs> um, we left off last session on a question, and uh, many half a dozen gazes turning towards Pip. This is your cue. Uh. <laughs> Am I supposed to re-ask the question? Because I don't remember what I said word for word. That's can okay. You read the the <laughs> not yet. <laughs> no, uh, but I can. Open <laughs> your mind while I pry a little deeper. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, the idea being that uh, the the two Atara are um, hesitant to submit themselves to magic cast by a foreigner, and Talix had just suggested that uh, that uh, perhaps uh, if. <clears throat> if, uh, well, there, there are people in this group who do magic that is not from uh, Plurna. Um, and uh, with a knowledge that <clears throat> of, what Pip's did, uh, of what Pip did previously uh, in the previous colony of Cleon when dealing with uh, uh, a different issue with a certain priest, uh, Talix was wondering if Pip could, uh, <clears throat> in some manner or another, gl glean information from... Uh, from the Zatara. This is the part where Austin starts talking. <laughs> Austin may not be present at this moment. Uh, <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Mike issues? <clears throat> oh no. No, what? No, you were. How does that happen? <laughs> <laughs> Austin? Oh, he disconnected. No. He also reconnected. <clears throat> oh, it's just give it's just give him like random replies so he thinks his mic is working again. Ah, uh, <laughs> Oh, good point. I agree, Austin. <laughs> yeah, we should. Oh do yeah, that. good point. That's crazy. That's that right. That yeah. Like Wait, that. I thought you only get that at level ten. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on a second. I have a cat that's prowling on the kitchen counters, which is. Not allowed! It's what you get for not feeding us. <laughs> they have been fed. <laughs> Let me take you to my bowl. Why am I hungry? It is barren. Look, you could do something about it. Oh! Oh. <sighs> Third time's the charm. 
Or maybe not. <laughs> we are cursed oh, this day. Yes! Yes! Hello, Austin! <laughs> <laughs> Did Can you lose you connection me? to Europe too? Apparently. I don't know what happened. We need to I buy was... more... <laughs> I was Don't talking. Not everyone here I, is on like you know fiber internet. I, I was saying the words, and then people were asking why I wasn't saying the <laughs> words, but I was, and Aww. and I ruined the whole session. No, <laughs> no, it is Bam. not ruined. Can I try again? Yes, please. Okay, take here your time. I go. Okay. <sighs> oh no. <laughs> what? Oh, all right. <clears throat> if if you're asking if I can use Ladarian magic to get the truth out of you, I can do that. And you see, uh, from Pip's hands, this doll that he's been carrying begins to hover in the air in front of him, and start gently spinning and drifting in the air in front of him as Pip pulls out a long and slender uh, thorn, like a long thorn from a rose bush and holds it out in front of him and says I could collect things from you create an effigy in your image then mark the tongue of the effigy with a rune causing you to speak only the truth but I might want to reconsider Fust because I think the plurin in magic might be a lot less painful hmm <laughs> That that sound is exactly what's an impending sense of dread. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Fus and Tirk just like exchange a glance, and you see Tirk just straight up like taking one step, one step back away from uh, from the floating doll, um, visibly concerned, um, uh, and. After a few seconds of, like, considering it, uh, um... Actually... Here. <laughs> I could make an intimidation <laughs> check if you want. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that what you're attempting to do, or are you trying I, to... It was. <laughs> like, sort of yeah, threaten I mean, them? I, I... <clears throat> yeah. Well, yeah like, that works. Go for it. I'm trying to coax them into the other option. Yeah. Ah, uh, go ahead and roll. It was very intimidating. Okay. Oh, pretty good. Smoldered. Okay. Um, so Tinker basically like, just holds up his uh, non-injured hand, uh, like po shakily pointing at a doll, just, just saying, oh, What is that? What is that? What is this? Well, it can be anything I want it to be. If I had something of yours, I could make it look like you. Then anything I do to that doll, you'd feel. And if I pricked its tongue with the thorn of truth, then you'd have no choice but to speak the truth. But the question is, Will these Plurn and priests believe in this magic any more than you believe in theirs? Um, <clears throat> Tirk sort of like just says something that, uh, like, the voice is so faint, italics, you basically have to read his lips uh, um, to be able to, to read the, the Italian word for, for witchcraft. Uh, um, and after a few more seconds of hesitation, uh, Fust takes a step forward and says, Look, I have nothing to hide. If 
we get through with this? Will it be the end of it? If we go... Uh, do this... Spell you guys keep talking about. Will they let us go afterwards? Will it be the end of it? Nothing else afterwards. We have their word, yes. He looks, uh, he turns to look at Tyrk, and after a few seconds, he just, he takes another step away from the doll. He crosses his arms, uh, you can see that uh, one of them, uh, his wrist is like not bending all the way, and it's uh, a little shaky as he holds the pose, and he bites out on one of his lips, and he says, on one condition. What is it? He looks at <clears throat> to the side, then back to the group, and says, Once we are under the spell, there will be no questions about our personal lives, about anything. In fact, there will be only one question. Whether or not any of us kill the Pax. You will not abuse your magic to get any other information out of us. None of it will be your concern. I'll make sure of it. They exchange another glance, fused nods, and then um, Kirk sort of like approaches you, but he goes like a little bit wide so he doesn't get any anywhere close to, to, to the doll. And Fuse just gestures like basically in the direction you guys came from and says, fine, lead away. All right. They did say, Sarabeth did say before I like realized that I fucked up. She did say that that would be enough, right? Yeah, I think she did. <clears throat> okay. Just making sure that I wasn't missing anything. <clears throat> okay. She did say it, it. She did say that getting a single person under the spell probably wouldn't be enough. But if she got m multiple of their tribe under it, well, I mean, it's the leader and the the witness. Yeah. So. Probably enough. Right. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. So the doll floats back to Pip, and then he steps in line with the rest of them, smirking <clears throat> slightly. <laughs> All right, you guys lead them to the temple? Yeah. Uh, all right. You take Fust and Tyrk to the Church of the Lion, where just pretty much where you left her about an hour or two ago, you find, uh, uh, you find Sarabeth tending to the inside of the church, uh, lighting candles, uh, even uh, actually, right now she's in the process of doing something that feels like um, almost humble for someone in her position. She's just dusting uh, the benches and the statues, and uh, uh, but when she's coming in, she slows down a little bit, glances at you, and then like, immediately puts away her dusting tool, noticing that you brought. Uh, uh, who you have brought with you. She steps towards the center of the temple. Uh, you see the two Atarophili who are with you just glancing around, visibly worried, uh, even sweating a little bit. Uh, um, both uncomfortable in this location and also uh, clearly concerned with uh, uh, the fact that they're about to submit themselves to magic cast by a foreigner. Uh, as Sarabeth approaches, she uh, just adjusts her cloak a little bit, pulls her hair back away from her shoulders, and says, Have you found out the truth? Or are we <laughs> here to learn it? These two have already told me their whole story. And they've agreed to share it with you under the truth spell. Um, they've made a request that our questions stay strictly uh, related to the case, of course. 
only to do with Pax, nothing else. But, uh, yeah, they've agreed. She tilts her head to the side. She seems <clears throat> a little unconvinced, but she gives it some thought and then nods and says, Very well. Now, they, if I recall, neither of them speaks Plurnon. Is that right? I am capable of translating. No, I will be the one asking the questions. Teach me. Let's take a few minutes. I only need to know uh, how to ask a couple. Alright. And uh, once this is done, these people will be free. Assuming Provided. they had nothing to do with her death. Then yes. All right. Well, tell me your questions. <clears throat> okay. Um, she grabs a piece of paper. And she gives it some thought, uh, and uh, then she will let you write down uh, the questions that she asks in uh, Itarian. And then she'll read them, and you guys will go over it like a couple of times so that she gets the pronunciation mostly right, and there is no room, there's no wiggle room, there's no possible like other interpretation. Her, uh, her first question which she will ask to both of them, will be Did you kill Pax, Vera's doctor? And the second one is How did Pax die? Hmm. Alright. Um, yeah, Talix will help her. And it takes no a few problem. minutes, uh, and like uh, at some point the Italians ask what, what you're doing, and you just go over it real quick, and it seems... Um, they seem, uh, okay with the plan. They don't, uh, sit down, they just, like, they just stand where they are, somewhat halfway between the altar and the exit, just looking around, but, uh, obviously not actually interested in their surroundings. Uh, until Sarabeth feels, uh, uh, prepared enough, and you have verified that their pronunciation is good enough. Um, she still asks for you to translate as she gives him instructions to just stand nearby, uh, near her, within a certain distance, and instructs the rest of you to, uh, step away instead, uh, 15 feet away from both of them, so that none of you will, will be included, um, in this area. <clears throat> and the two... Tell the two... will stay within the area. Okay, um... Serbeth sees this and she says, if you, if that is where you'll be, you will be affected by the spell as well. You notice, I want yes? Them to be, I want them to be convinced it's safe. Very well. As long as you know what you're doing. I'm not trying to trick anyone. You understand this, yes? Yes, but... They might not be so convinced. Fair enough. Then let us begin. As she uh, holds up the holy symbol of the lion, the uh, one of the deities from the Plurnan Pantheon, uh, she speaks arcane words that uh, uh, Talix Brook and Pontifex would be uh, familiar with in the way they, they sound, uh, recognizing the magic that uh, has uh, affected so much of Plurna's history. Um, and it only takes a few seconds, uh, it is not a long ritual. Uh, she speaks the words, there is a brief light, not a flash, more like a, the, uh, a soft uh, flicker for a moment, like the light of a candle. Um, and uh, this requires a saving throw. 
and I imagine that Taxis, uh, Italics is willingly failing it? Yep. <clears throat> okay. Um, there is no particular indication. You, you don't feel uh, anything affect you besides a sudden, uh, just a brief soft warmth that then already fades away. Um, and you're not going to feel anything unless you will make an attempt to... Uh, to lie about anything. Mm -hmm. um, as Sarabeth holds up the little scroll where she, where she wrote down uh, the sentences as you have taught her and her little annotations to know exactly how to pronounce uh, uh, the questions she's about to ask, she addresses Fused first, the person who found uh, the body of Pax, and she asks, she asks in Itarian, Did you kill Pax? Vera's doctor. She used to, uh, opens his mouth, hesitates for a moment, and then says, No, I... I didn't kill a Pax. I haven't killed anyone. Um, and Talix, as, as part of, like, teaching her the questions, you also taught her basically yes and no. <clears throat> Um, but she, so she understands the no, but then she, so. yeah, she looks at you yeah. for like the rest of the translation. Mm -hmm. Um, and the rest of you will hear, uh, uh Talix just relay Fust's answer. Uh, Sarbeth stares at him for a moment, then looks over at Tirk, the man, um, who had last seen Pax alive, and she asks, did you kill Pax? And he, quick, a little quicker than Fust did, he says, no, no, I did not kill her. Sarah Beth waits for Talix to just uh, elaborate on the answer, and she listens to him and looks back at the two of them, and you see her clenching the scroll with just a little bit more strength. She turns to Fused. How did Pax die? Fused looks at the Talix, kind of answering her, but speaking to him, knowing that he will translate the answer. And he says, It has to have been... It has to have been Sived. Natural causes, no doubt. She listens to Talix translating the sentence, her body eerily still. She repeats the question, uh, this time addressing Tirk. How did Pax die? Tirk sort of, um, he looks at Fuse and gives a bit of a, a bit of a nod, acknowledging what Fuse said, and he turns towards Lady Sarabeth and says, it was Sivad. I need everyone to roll an inside check. Hmm. Hmm. She would know if someone resisted. Yeah, hmm. but I'm. How could someone so confidently say it was Saved under Truth Spell? Without, huh? To, to Pip, Pontifex, and to Brooke, the ever so slight change in Lady Serbeth's expression um, jumps at you. Um, the way she, she just squints for a moment, um, and it's it's clear that she is unhappy 
with the answers she has been given. Um, she folds up the parchment, uh, uh, but in a in a kind of um in a messy way. It's almost like she's just rolling it up into a ball, uh, but b barely containing herself and trying not to do not to do that. Um, she turns to face Talix and says, "You have translated faithfully, yes." Absolutely. You didn't skip any word? Alter the meaning of their answers in any way? I have not. These men do not know anything more than what they have said. Damn it. There is one more witness out there who might know something. But there's no reason to keep these Itarophilia in town under surveillance any longer. I... Everyone here, I honestly believe, is innocent. I... Fine. And she does this sort of, like, dismissive gesture, like you do to, like, send someone away, but... What you feel instead is this sense of warmth, uh, um, the opposite of that, just a sense of cold wash over you, and then the effect of the spell um, being removed. And she turns around, uh, facing away from everybody, uh, as the two Atara just take a deep sigh of relief, and she stands still for a few seconds, just clenching one of her fists, and she, when she turns back, she is uh, as calm and as serene as she was before. Um, she adjusts her hair for a few seconds and then says, Okay. <clears throat> I will keep my end of the bargain. You and your people are free to go. I... And she hesitates. I apologize for holding you. Talents translates that. Um, Tirk sort of, sort of like raises his chin a little bit uh, in a sort of a uh, told you so kind of way. Um, a few is slightly less cocky about it. Uh, um, he just looks. He looks a little upset uh, that this whole thing even happened in the first place, but it's clear that he's trying not to let it get to him and trying not to, to bring it up anymore. Uh, and he just wants out, so he, all he says is, we'll be on our way then. And he turns Thank around, you. and so it does Tirk, and he leave the building. I do believe there's a little bit more to this story that we're missing, but whatever the answers are, they don't know it. I would like to find this other Hitara who is there, this Sol, <sighs> and just see what he might know. We have, we have guards all around the colony. The gnomes, too, especially on the eastern side, where they're working on the train rails. Nobody has seen the guy. The last person to see him was the gnome who took him to Pax. Nobody has seen him leave. Nobody has seen where he went. <sighs> Interesting. I don't understand. I... Something must have happened. Then it has to be him. I, my guards, they found this thing when they entered the, the infirmary. There was the smell. We noticed the same. If only I could see There's... her body, I could, I could tell if she was poisoned. She must have been. Unfortunately. That's a, that's a taboo that the Atari just will not forgive, regardless of circumstance. I'm afraid it might cause a great deal more trouble if you tried to take the body. 
We might have to find a different way of getting to the truth. I promise okay. I haven't given up on you, okay? <laughs> you've... You've done plenty. You and your friends. <laughs> uh, and your translation work. It... It is impeccable. I promised you a reward. Um, she steps away from you. Um, back into the area uh, of the temple that that is under that uh, um, what it what the roof isn't filled in, and there is that large space where you can see the sky above. Um, and from there, she goes into a side room uh, for just no more than 20 seconds or so, and then she walks right back out. Uh, looks at each of you in turn, and then just addresses Talix directly, puts a, a small pouch of coins into his hands, and says, Do let me know if you ever find the guy. I will. You don't have to bring him here, I'll just... If I were to know where he is, I could send someone after him. Well, expect a letter. Thank you, all of you, for everything. B before you think, uh, I do not wish to speak out of turn, but uh, if this is the end of uh, this whole deal, I have uh, a question to ask of you. Do these have any meaning towards you? And he's gonna uh, pull from his bag the just piles of bird pieces and like fish around for a piece that says OTH on it. And like probably pull out a like an intact or mostly intact like bird head. We've been followed by these things uh, and they have turned to violent recently. And after being dealt with, I see these engravings on them. None of us are familiar. Um, where is uh, why then ever so slightly in recognition as you're pulling out the the pieces of the mechanical birds? Um, are we still in the zone in the zone of truth? By the way, no, it's been dispelled. It's, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then she's surprised uh, towards the end of your explanation and says, "We've seen these." Uh, around the colony for a while now, a few months, but you said they have turned violent? Uh, they tried to pilfer something very personally valuable. It, it, it seemed as if they knew what they were looking for. That's and they new were to me. Cooperating. I've never received a report of uh, any of these. Uh, machines doing anything other than sitting around on rooftops. Do you know if any of the other colonies have seen these? I am not aware, but I have also not asked. Hmm. Uh, Lady Serebeth, how long have you been here in Ladaria? Seven years. Why? Uh, okay, this is now an, an out-of-character DM question. Um, when did Jamiel go missing? It's only been a few months now, right? Yeah, it's been... about three months or four. Do you perhaps have past acquaintance with uh, one Jamiel Fleetfoot? I know the name. I've met him once. What was your impressions of him? He's a jerk. I believe oh. you. Very... Uh, you know how famous people can get. Things get to their head. They have money, they have fame, and... They like He's to... A crazy. 
the moment that you publish one or two or nine texts on a subject that you are adept at, perhaps hold a PhD or four, <laughs> uh, you suddenly seem to think that you understand how the entire world works and uh, it leads to... Uh, anyways, I am on a tangent, but... Uh, this, uh, these birds, this OTH, the initials have no meaning that you can recall, uh, is perhaps any on the off-chance connection to Jamil Fleetfoot that you know of? The initials... This is purely conjecture, of course. Believe me, I am trying to help you. You've helped me, after all. But... Uh, these letters mean nothing to me. Not that I can recall right now, at the very least. I see. Well, uh, I suppose in the event that they become trouble for you as well, uh, know that they are allergic to thunder magic. They seem to burst into myriad pieces. If it is true that they have bothered people, then they are no they longer have. welcome here. I can uh, promise I you less for magically capable I may have perished that day that day be this morning I think I will let my <laughs> guards know that they are to be destroyed on sight well also if you could get any information about their origins I, I will they, ask the nearby the colonies the root of the problem would be more apt. Yes, I will bring this up uh, in my communications with the nearby colonies. We'll see if the issue persists elsewhere and I will warn everyone of the danger. Oh, thank ah. you so much. Uh, the same. If I may, and she's addressing Pontifex, if I may have a. Um, do you have a world point card? I do. His eyes like bing. Oh, he's holding it right here. I think like his little sass that has like little dividers with bookmarks. That's lame. Like these are health documents, and these are components. He like flips through his little hip hip file cabinet and he pulls out his world point card. And, like hands it over with both hands. And she she writes uh, she writes down your information on the same piece of arrangement that she had before, but like on the back. And she says, "If I were to learn anything about these machines, I will make sure to let you know." I would most appreciate it, especially if it is by uh, written mail. And you believe that they have a connection with Jamuel? I would not go so far as to say I believe they do, but uh, I have a very strong hunch. Do you think he sent them? Do I think that Jemuel sent them? Yes, is, is that why you brought him up? Yeah, no? It is a working hypothesis, but... Uh, no. Mm. Very well. Oh, now that you say that, if it was, I would surprisingly be unsurprised. But it is, seems unlikely. Jamuel and I are acquaintances, Jamuel and all of us are acquaintances of a sort from a different time. It does not... It does not smell of Jamuel. Not enough pompous arrogance. <laughs> yes, indeed, if it... If you had anything to do with this, I'm sure we would find his name on them. Alright, is there anything else I can help you with? I think that's it. We should get going. We Thank you again for your help. Here. Be safe. Hmm. Alright. What time of day uh, is it? Did we, <laughs> did we need fun. to get... We were supposed to, like, decide what to buy between sessions, and that did not happen. At least not for me. 
Did other people do uh, that? No. <laughs> nope. Okay. I All need right. rations. Yeah, we, I definitely need to buy rations. I have an Uplu fruit. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely rotten by now. There is one way to find out. Uh. It's around noonish. I'm gonna make Uplu wine. I think there's more than one way to find out if a fruit is rotten. <laughs> no, no, I like where you are going with this Uplu wine. Have hmm. any of you ever had or heard of this? I sense a booming <laughs> business. <laughs> so, can we buy rations for five silver apiece, or is it more or less here? Or ah, uh, you can for five silver apiece. All right. Uh, yeah, I don't remember if there's anything else. We are. Hang on. Have we all agreed that we're going to Aria next? Is that the next one on the on the road on the way? On the way to yeah, uh, going west, yeah. Simlielon, because that's where Pontifex is wanting to get eventually. But I know it's a ways off. That's where Tekka needs to go too. Mm. Yeah, it's Alex wanted to go through Aria on the way to Simlielon. I will I buy eight rations. It's a slightly longer way to get there, but I think you mentioned that you wanted to go there. And none of us did anything against. It. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. What's this rumor? The glove. <laughs> that uh, is. We really decided not to do that because it would involve uh, it would grave involve grave. digging up a grave. <laughs> Fair enough. We could probably remove it, maybe, because I don't think we plan on doing that ever. So it's about nine days travel. You know, maybe one of these days, if we decide that uh, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna go down the darker route, then and... maybe you know a healing glove could be useful. And you learn that that is a place where the Atara want to bury Pax. Oh. In yeah, let's, let's leave that there for now. All right. <laughs> I am buying yeah, you never know when you might want to go great robbing. Maybe the next time Pontifex I'll, goes on one of his little walkabouts I'll add, for a full I'll day. add something to it. Though. Also, where the Atara... <clears> I'm going to buy a seven days worth of rations. It's, it's, a, ten, it's a nine to ten day travel. Yeah, that's okay. All right. Well, you better catch some of your own damn food. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm if saying no is I have shared my food a lot so far. And I just removed all of my rations from my inventory. RIP! <laughs> uh, Talix, uh, can, I, can I take the map away? Uh, yeah, I guess. Okay. Everyone say goodbye, map. Uh, Bye, Matt. <laughs> we'll miss you. Oh, it's right here if you guys want it. <laughs> uh, Talix, uh, the coin pouch that Serbath gave you contains 250 gold pieces. Oh my god! Holy crap! That is like two MJ robes. Talix <laughs> <laughs> um, will go ahead and split it. So 50 gold each? Yeah. Math checks out. Everyone, get 50 gold. Ah, oh, I can buy I so many toys with to this. All on. So much rock candy. <laughs> Crap, now I feel like I should be buying a single it. ration. Wait, no. okay. I think... What? I feel like there was... <laughs> what? Something ah! we have <laughs> what is it? Coming up. <laughs> it's giving me so, many, so much anxiety. Right. What, Jason? What? <laughs> I guess we're okay. fine. I guess we're fine. For some reason, Wait. these things are not loading for me anymore. What things? The dragon and... Uh... Oh no, Whatever I see him. The dragon? And I hear like a second ago as well. What? I can't see the shadows. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> Is it here Are they now? back for you, Dennis? Uh, let, uh, uh, nope. Huh. It's okay, I can make it out. <laughs> <laughs> you can make out the shadow. I mean, let me post a picture. 
It's all right. We'll use our imaginations.、Mm -hmm. I think it's also pretty telling on what <laughs> where so, what is. Have we found As... out what Jason was concerned about? Can I buy a replacement climber's kit in town? Hmm. Is that, or is that like too weird? I'll just roll for it. Uh, while you're rolling, make another check on what we're gonna do. Pontifex is now interested in buying brewer's supplies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. To make a blue wine. Yeah, to make a blue wine. This is genius. <laughs> If one uplu fruit counts as a full ration, uplu wine could be like extremely nourishing, and like <laughs> I don't know, medically valuable to give people like a full meal in liquid form. Amazingly, both of those things are available. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> are they for just listed price? Yeah. Okay.、Uh, he spends twenty gold <laughs> on brewer's <laughs> supplies, <laughs> and they probably buy some rations. <laughs> uh, as everyone heads up to the marketplace,、uh, Tega says, "I will not be gone for long, only to return this."、Uh, kind of picking out the watering can he's holding, and to maintain、oh. life. So he's gonna get some water from the river、oh. and water the plants. Can, can I come? You may follow me, Pip. Pip will go with Tekka. Huh.、Um, Note that from now on, I've put the book. I put Jamuel、uh, on the side of the table of whoever is holding it, so that yeah, from now on we、uh, always know. I like it. That's helpful. Oh, very good. I don't know why we haven't been doing that before. I have. I have props. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so it's Tekka and Pip and Jamuel、uh, that are gonna go to. Uh, back to the、uh, to the infirmary, whose aim is gone. There we go.、Uh, on the back to water the the flowers. Yeah. That have been have been、uh, neglected for a few days. What state are the flowers in? Like, are they wilting already, or?、Um, most of the flowers that are in, in this little, in, in this little、um, I forgot the word. Like the little, a little patch of dirt that is specifically for them, not like a pot, but just an outside area.、Mm -hmm. um, the flowers in there,、um, as far as you can tell, they're kind of delicate.、Um, they wouldn't really grow there naturally, but they have been taken very good care of, and that's how they've been thriving. And some of them are missing, and some of them have had their petals removed. But the ones that are still there、um, just look like they need a little bit of、uh, uh, they need、TLC? a little bit of care. Yes, TLC.、Uh, so you water them, and then you just uh, uh, you adjust the terrain around them, uh, uh, make sure that they're properly spaced, uh, and uh,、um, you are this is, this is kind of you know how to do this.、Uh, um, You spend on it a bit long, a bit more time than you had originally expected,、uh, but not enough to like actually get the others to be worried. And、uh, Pip can help if he'd like. Uh, yeah, Pip will. I mean, Pip will try and help as much as he can with it. Um, uh, like he's he's lived in nature a lot, but he he doesn't really know much about the cultivating or care of plants. But he's happy to learn and and help、uh, Tekka as much as he can. And、uh, every now and then he'll pipe in with a question about what this plant is and and why it looks so cool and what it does and if it's poisonous and <laughs> just random stuff. Bonding moment! Yay! Okay. Anything else I I need to know? Anything else、mm -hmm. you guys are buying? Anywhere you want to go? It's gonna be a few more hours before the meeting with the、uh, the dragon. I'm good. No, I think yeah. I can't no, I think we have Pontifex has got his brew supplies and like you know. Reading the manual. <laughs> <laughs> the manual. 
it's a half manual spec then. <laughs> or <laughs> so that actually brings up a question. Do you have any like what's the method for for learning a tool? Because I don't think you can actually learn a tool with any feet or anything like that. Uh, you would need to find someone to teach you, and then spend uh, uh, a certain amount of time. And I can come up with like a proper formula um, if we get to it. But you'd have to find someone. Okay. Or, I suppose, like, you could also find a book. Okay. Um, would I be able to, if a feat gives me proficiency in a skill of my choice, could I change it to a tool? Do a tool instead? Or, like, a future level? I'm gonna say yes. Okay. Then, uh, unless we find someone... And that's probably my plan. That changes my, my feet plan, but that's fun. Brewer supplies. Okay. Awesome. Um, um yeah. Tekka would like to cross the bridge and buy a sort of vegetables directly from the farmers. If possible. Yeah, that's easy enough. Um, we can just go with the, like, rations rules. And, you know, okay. you'll be buying fresh vegetables equivalent of a day's worth of uh, uh, of travel, 4 to 5 silver. Cool. You can write nice. it down if you're in your notes in case the particular ingredient is important. Thank you. Um, you can meet Tekka. up for... Tekka! <laughs> what? <laughs> What's your favorite vegetable? Hmm. That is a good question. I believe versatile vegetables to be important. Vegetables to be eaten raw, cooked in a stew. Perhaps a root. Have you tried the willow root? Um, I don't think so. It is not common here, to my knowledge, but it has a lingering aftertaste. And it is hard when raw, but incredibly soft when cooked that I've... sounds really good actually granny's a good cook but some of the things she puts in her pot are really weird hmm what does your grandmother put in her stews well a lot of those plants back there that you said were poisonous she would put in the stew and uh, she would put frog legs in them, and salamander eyes. Pip, this may come off, but your story feels similar to a story I was taught as a child. Really? Of a woman who traveled the lands and the waters for ingredients most uncommon, most odd, and combined them into brews and stews and drinks out of this world that could turn you stronger to accomplish impossible feats. <laughs> cool. That's, I mean, that's sort of what I'm doing now. I don't know what Granny's going to do with the stuff I give her, but she's making something with them. Did you ever feel different after having her food? Um less hungry hmm. 
did she ever teach you how to yeah cook? she she taught me a lot of things actually i'm i'm hoping that one day i'll be able to make some some inter interesting stuff like she does too we could try on the road do you remember any of her recipes yeah yeah let's try it what do we need Pip will uh, just say a bunch of like <laughs> random plants that he's heard of that have like these these weird names that that uh, maybe only granny uses for them but may be official um, <laughs> a little hard to tell sometimes what's What's the name Granny made up for them, and what uh, is like the actual name of a plant? And um, some of them are just descriptions, <laughs> right? <laughs> hmm. It's I... a very vague recipe. It's extremely vague. <laughs> Ingredients it's were like... a handful, a bunch, some. It's like a touch of green and a dash of blue, uh, <laughs> and then a drip of snot to make a tasty stew. <laughs> Stuff like that. <laughs> something borrow something blue? Uh. <laughs> uh, hmm. Well, there is one thing my mother told me, Pip. It's that you adapt to the tools you have. So we may have to make changes with what we have, with what we find. But we might end up in the same place. Okay, all right. And as they're as they're walking along, Pip will just like stop and pick up uh, various plants as they go along. <laughs> <laughs> Great. We have a sub quest! Woo! Woo! Yay! <laughs> uh, you guys all meet up in a surprise at some point for a bit of a late ish lunch. And that is a perfect opportunity to catch up on a few things, uh, merely the, the things that happened when you guys were separated. Uh, Pontifex has yet to learn uh, the details of uh, the uh, dinner that took place with Liana. If you guys would like to share, I figure that Talix would. Um, yeah, uh... Are we actually gonna RP that, or...? Um, it depends on whether Pontifex has anything in particular to say to, um, the shared dream person thing. Oh, right, yeah, that's important. I thought we were just... And then we, you know, had cornbread, and we had a good time. And... We played Monopoly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then we had a bad time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I just... games, but I have been told I am banned from playing them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Talix can show the drawing that is now in his chess. possession. Oh. Everyone always gets angry when I read the menu. I'd like to make sure I understand the rules very thoroughly, and Monopoly is a lengthy tome, to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Professor, I th I think I've already asked everyone about this, but do you know of any people that look like this? Looks something like an elf, doesn't he? But he had God. purple skin. <laughs> Is there some role for this? I'll just tell you that he doesn't. Nope. That's never heard of it, never seen it. Maybe saw it, but don't remember. Do you think anyone who got brought near to death like that would be the same here? I'm sorry, does he does it do I wet? People who got robbed? Near near to death. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Where did the... Uh, this information, you got this from the children, yes? They both saw the same thing. Same thing I saw. I believe it is pertinent to ask what is it that you have in common with these children? We nearly died. So did we. So have many others. Uh, specifically, we were, well, knocked out. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I feel like uh, if it is everyone who has ever been knocked unconscious, then uh, this dreamer person would be a, a story amongst the soldiers at the bare minimum. I assume, you know, everyday warriors are knocked unconscious on a daily basis. I don't understand physical training regimens, but I hear <laughs> it's what they do. <laughs> I just feel like if it was something so plain that... Uh, it would be a much more widespread story. I feel like there must Perhaps be something we should look for this. a battle. The scene of a battle. <clears throat> uh, you could go uh, bludgeon a gnome and then ask him <laughs> if they saw a dreaming no. elf. There's the one in front of the of the dragon sword. I know just the one. She keeps giving me the stink eye. <laughs> you, you, speaking of stink eye, you notice again that Pip in the room is just like still angrily glaring at you and hasn't seemed to stop uh, since the things that have happened in the morning. Things that well, have happened in the morning? Wait, are we all there? When, when Everyone all, is in the end, yes. Shot. Oh. Uh, I guess that was what, yesterday now. Yeah, what, what happened this morning? You mean or yesterday, yesterday morning. It was yesterday, <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, I can tell you that if this was a story among soldiers, then I would know of it. It's not a regular part of the training regime to knock your partner out. <laughs> well, perhaps but, it's just a recent thing. Or just local. I mean, that is very likely since the only experience, or well, most of the experience I have is from Plurna, and not in that area. Well, are there any other... Uh shared characteristics we could perhaps examine if I, add uh, controlled variables if i may add uh there, there have been uh, times during your training uh, here on Dar brook that you have been like knocked unconscious for one reason or another um yeah that's and, why like, i corrected myself mm -hmm. yeah just just making uh, sure letting you know mm -hmm. so we were farmers bum, ba -dum, bum, bum, bum. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, I seem to recall the children's mother, but uh, the other half I know not the story of. It, uh, I know it is not exactly appropriate dinner speak, either. but did anyone mention their father? Dad. I see. Well, that rules that one out. Uh, Hmm. Did uh, any of the children seem to show a particular proclivity for something? Special talents? Well, one of them drew this. Uh, <laughs> you think drawing's the link? Well, perhaps it could be, uh, I don't know, artists who have glimpsed death? That is a little more narrow than anyone who has been knocked unconscious. Well, maybe just in the future, if we find anyone else who uh, had a similarly harrowing experience, well, uh, we could just later ask them some questions. We are about to have a conversation with a very knowledgeable being, which I have every intention of dumping a myriad of questions on. <laughs> oh, well, not to add this one to the list. Yeah, take these drawings. See if he knows what that might be. Do you it seems to come from Florida. 
I oh, well, assume it I would be no trade. trouble. Well, if well, you'd help me. Don't mind the uh, discussion and lecturing between two old men? I'm used to it. <laughs> it's fair enough. As you will should be. <laughs> but uh, of course that extends to everyone here. I assume if I can bring one, I can bring four. I don't want to go anymore. Oh, but you were so excited about the dragons. I don't want to go. Uh, may I ask why? You can't keep me safe with a bunch of gnomes. You can't keep me safe with a dragon. Yeah, I don't foresee having to keep you safe from a dragon. And I don't want to go. I did. Okay, that is fair enough. It's, it's okay. I, <clears throat> if you don't mind, I can stay back. I don't really need to see the dragon. So if you want uh, some company... Okay. Brooke, okay. have you had any experience with dragons before? Uh, nothing memorable. <laughs> How is that possible? <laughs> I figured any oh encounter God. with a dragon is quite memorable. So interesting. I had no idea. <laughs> no, That's so cool. <laughs> let me let me It yeah, is so special. magnificent that encounters with dragons is just mundane and not worthy of speaking. It's just Wednesday to him. <laughs> let me rephrase. No, I have not. This is one of the first dragons. <laughs> When, well, yeah, one of the first dragons I have seen. I know of how dangerous they can be. That's why I told us, or told you guys to hide when we encountered that big flying one here. But I'm pretty sure that if anything interesting comes up, that I will definitely be let known by Pontifex afterward. Hmm. I mean, this I also that. only comes if if Pip wants me to. You can go if you want. I'll be fine. If, uh, none of you have to come, of course. I would you, just, you do not wish to hold the opportunity uh, out of your reach. It is a, a rare one, especially a dragon of this age. But, uh, Tekka, I do request that you personally accompany me. I am okay. curious, so I will follow. And, uh, Ip, if you change your mind, you are, of course, always welcome. I know that, uh, I may have endangered us to an extent with the... the gnomes before, but uh, Talix or Brook are there at the dragon, perhaps maybe they can assure your safety. I do not expect to regain your trust so quickly. But maybe do you have they any have... idea what could have happened? I do. I think he like slaps his thigh. I have quite a vivid idea of what could happen, of what did happen. That was your leg. It could have been all of our necks on the line. We could have been hanged. Uh, shot, yes. Hung, unlikely. I don't think the particulars matter here, Professor. The particulars always matter. <sighs> I see your point. I, uh... I had a unfortunate reaction to uh, the situation. It is uncharacteristic of me. And I spent uh, the evening in meditation to work through my thoughts. <laughs> I understand I have put everyone at risk in that particular moment. And I assure you it will not happen again. We would all clean our know for our uh, dispassion. Our control over ourselves. <laughs> well, if someone points a gun at your head, don't yell shoot. I will try to remember that next time. <laughs> I'm a uh, 
stuff. I'm gonna go take a bath before for the big time. Okay. You were allowed to spend the time organizing my questions. I'm gonna think he just like pfft, like throws a whole <laughs> ton of like sheets and parchment all over the table and starts organizing them, like okay. scratching things. I'm like, no, that is unimportant. No, that is pedantic. <laughs> yeah, you guys have uh, still a few more hours before you go. So who uh, will be going to see the dragon? Pontifex, Tech, and uh, Talix. Is that right? Sounds like it. Okay. And will Pip and Brooke stay at the at the inn? Brooke, you don't have to stay if you don't want to. I'm not gonna go anywhere. Brooke? Oh no. Dennis? <laughs> Brooke left. <laughs> <laughs> you want to take a bath? <laughs> No more. <laughs> Wait yeah, <to> track. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to stay if you don't want to. It's okay, great. bye. He's, he's, like, he's already gone. Out the window. <laughs> there's the there's a silhouette in the air of Brooke having immediately <laughs> dashed out of the I'm building. I'm sorry, I went to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it was a good moment where my presence wasn't needed. <laughs> it was the perfect moment. It was great. Pip <laughs> just said. You don't have to stay if you don't want to, and then there was silence. <laughs> <laughs> it was just an imprint of where his butt used to be on the chair. <laughs> Say less. He's out. Hold um, my face. No, but Pip, it's a, it's. I'll stay back. If you change your mind, we can go there together. But as I said, well, I'm intrigued. I'm not that interested. All right. Okay. <laughs> we can. <laughs> we can. We can. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I'm still laughing at the Brooke thing. <laughs> okay, I'm good. Uh, we can skip uh, straight to Pontifex, Talix, and Tekka's visit to the dragon. Sounds good. Um, <sighs> you guys are prepared for this. Uh, Talix says... Faith Pontifex has his list of questions. Tekka. Uh huh. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. Tekka has his saw. <laughs> uh, and as you approach the dragon's nest um, from its uh, from its entrance. Uh, um, a half elf with curly black hair. Uh, you guys have seen this uh, this, uh, this man before. Uh, uh, y very young, uh, younger than any of you, um, with a large scar uh, that goes down like vertically on uh, his right cheek. Um, he rushes towards you and he has this little like couple of notebooks uh, uh, that he's holding in his arms. Uh, he comes over. Sees the three of you, then addresses just directly Pontifex and says, His radiance is waiting for you. Uh, would it be a problem if uh, I have people with me? Uh, the half elf checks his notes. It takes a long time, like a full minute, where he just leaves you in silence. Um, and then at the end, he nods and says, It is not an issue. You're all invited. Uh, perfect. Uh, there may perhaps be two more. Uh, a small child carrying creepy doll and a very tall man with uh, ginger hair. I've met them. I remember them. Hold on a second. He checks his notes again. <laughs> <laughs> Take your time. They may come in during your meeting problem. as well. Uh, fantastic. 
You are all guests of his radiance. We are honored. Sh sure, we are very pleasant to be radiated. <laughs> that is not how we would use that word. But it's good that you're honored. Uh, now keep in mind, always refer to him as his radiance. Show your respects. Do not insult him. Do not insult the colony. Um, that part is not actually official. None of it is official, but I'm telling you that. Uh, do you have some sort of authority over Rosir Gamir or his radiance? I work for him. I see. Good enough. So you have been warned. Okay? Good. All right. Uh, I am Gathar. I don't need your oh. names. I already have them. I'm sure oh, you nice to meet you. He like what did he say his name is? Razar? Gathar. Gathar. Oh, Gathar. I Bloop. totally misheard. Uh, and like, he has this for a moment when, uh, when uh, Talk says, nice to meet you. And he stares at him, almost like shocked. And he says, okay, follow me. And he's just going to lead you into the wooden construction uh, where even even from a distance, it's impossible to miss the, the enormous dragon somewhat in the middle of it. And this time, uh, the area near him has been, um, yeah, you haven't shown up unannounced, uh, unlike the first time. Uh, this time there is uh, a a number of chairs uh, already arranged uh, and even a little table with uh, uh, some snacks on it. Uh, you, uh, Gathar leads you to your seats and uh, encourages, uh, that invites you to sit down. Absolutely. <clears throat> what sorts of snacks? Um, they are plain cookies. Um, not particularly exciting, but there is a there is there is a variety of them. But uh, they're all uh... <laughs> plain rice crackers. My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, I got lost in my notes. Um, there is an assortment of them, but none of them are particularly exciting. None of them are too sweet. All right, tell us what happened. Uh, and once you're all seated, um, the dragon is laying down in a sort of like uh, curled up way that most animals do, uh, but his, uh, he, his neck is held up. And then he slowly lowers his head so that by the time it's all the way down on the ground, uh, it's almost uh, just only a few feet away from your table and facing you directly. Um, the size difference is incredible. He could just easily devour all of you and the table and the chairs uh, uh, just with one bite. Uh, and it's, it's intimidating just being in front of something bigger than most buildings you've ever been in. Um, on an instinctive level, it, it's it's terrifying, it's fascinating, and you're, for, for you who are the curious kind, um, it's an amazing experience, but that, that sense of being in danger, they just feel on this primal instinctive level, uh, is not going to go away. Uh, then the dragon speaks. I trust that you've been well. I am uh, not quite used to that yet. Uh, well is a relative term. I'm sure that, uh, well, you were there. Has anyone bothered you since then? Uh, no. Let me know if anything were to happen. Uh, well, no, 
how did you say it? Uh, 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 first, uh, how formal are these meetings intended to be? Is this supposed to be a, a, a academic discussion with lots of uh, gesticulations and mannerisms and formalities, or can this be a more casual discussion? Uh, Gathar holds up a finger and, and says, uh, You will address his radiance with uh, proper respects, and then, like, right after, uh, Razigamir will say, Please speak to me in whatever manner you find to be most comfortable. Perfect, I appreciate the hospitality. Uh, first of all, uh, and he'll he'll pull out his little stack of papers and, like, straighten them up on the table and, and lay them out accordingly. Uh, I have narrowed down my questions for you to a, a sort of a triage list. Uh, how, how long is uh, this meeting supposed to... Uh, how long is my time slot, per se? Gathar holds up a finger again. 30 minutes! Oh, boy, okay. And he starts <laughs> scratching things <laughs> off furiously. <laughs> and, like, just balls up a piece of paper and jams it in his bag. And I think his, his like, stack of like 12 or 13 pages has been narrowed down to two. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, first of all, um, these, and he'll pull out the, uh, the bird pieces. Uh, do you know of these creatures? It seems they are uh, relatively prominent. Uh, these initials, no, any of this mean anything to you? Rosigamir slightly lifts his head just so that he uh, has a better angle to look at the papers from. Uh, Gathar will just... Uh, not the paper, the, the pieces uh, uh, of the birds. Uh, Gathar kind of snatches some of them off of your hands just to hold them up like a couple of inches closer to Rosigamir. It's clearly unnecessary. Um, <laughs> but he, he seems very into his job. Um, after... After a few seconds of examining them, uh, Rosigamir will answer. I have received word from Lady Serbath about these machines. I have seen them around the colony before, but they had never bothered any of us until today. I see. Okay. Perhaps we will uh, return to this in a few minutes, but uh, I suppose I can go through the easier questions first. Uh, we've recently encountered uh, a wolf that was uh, inundated with some kind of ruby gems, and uh, he'll pull out the 50 golds worth of uh, the teeth and stuff. Uh, this is... I'm not from here, but uh, is this a natural occurrence, or is there something... Uh, I don't know, does this stand out as odd to you? Do you know what could have caused this? Reports of wolves matching the description of the one you have caught and killed lately have reached me in the past. These creatures have been near Vera for no longer than a few months. I am not aware of other sightings. Hopefully, you have killed the last one of them. Okay, hey, that is a uh, one, and he like scratches it off the <laughs> list. This is a simple one. Uh, 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 Gathar goes through his notes, them. and he, ta he takes him about the same amount that he takes you to prepare for every question. Uh, and he points at somewhere on his notes. He's not, he's not actually showing them to you, but he's pointing. They just tap, 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 tap. And he says, These wolves have been attacking uh, the chickens and the pigs of our farmers for, for a while now. A couple months, as uh, his radiance says. Uh, sightings. At the very least, one, people are reported hearing... <laughs> Molly. People are, are reported hearing the howling of two. There could be more. If there are two, I don't see why there wouldn't be an entire pack, unless uh, wolves work differently uh, on the Daria. 
is a very scholarly assumption. Uh, it is uh, largely unimportant. It is something that has been scratching at my mind. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, this one is unimportant. Uh, this is uh, purely fluff. Uh, this is just bragging, if I'm being honest. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, this uh, requires a little bit of... Uh, 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 I, I don't know the word that escapes me. Uh, Pontifex knows the word. Matt is a dumb head. He is a six intelligence. But uh, <laughs> it is some previous explanation. Uh, I am a professor um, back in Plurina. Um, in, uh, I studied, or I profess rather, uh, theology and the origins of the Plurinan deities and uh, some such. And uh, in my later years, I have since uh, left for uh, Eleonardin, the home of the elves, and I have learned uh, arcane magic, and I have come up with a bit of a contentious hypothesis that I will not bore you with, but to sum it or summarize the whole thing, uh, uh, my current concern, my academic ambitions are towards uh, the origin of arcane and divine magic, uh, and I believe there is some sort of a primal uh, a shared ancestor, a source, you could say. And uh, I'm having... Well, here, and uh, he'll pull out the, the multicolored D4 prism thing. I've had this since, well, for as long as I can remember, I'm told I was born with it, essentially. Uh, delivered to my foster parents with this in my care, and... Uh, I know not exactly what it is, but I cannot help but assume there is some sort of connection. Uh, does this object mean anything to you, someone of your age? And uh, I think he says uh, heritage, but in Draconic. You may perhaps know something of these magical things. You're showing him the pyramid shaped uh, uh, gemstone. Yeah. Okay. Um,. The one that changes, uh, that changes colors based on which side you're looking yep. through. Uh, Gathar will attempt to snatch it off your hands like he did with the other thing, no. too. I, I figured. <laughs> like, he reaches yeah. for it and you, like, pull back. And uh, he, he, like, puffs out one. his cheeks. Like, he, he, he's about to, 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 uh, to just tell you a piece of his mind, but, like, just... Uh, Razigamir does, like, this, just this very... Very slight movement with his head. It only, it, it, like, his snout only moves a couple of inches, but, like, Gathar seems to be, like, very, uh, very conscious of the body language of the dragon and immediately steps back. <clears throat> uh, then and, uh, I think Pontifex will mage hand it and raise it to the level that the guy <laughs> had it before. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's basically unnecessary, um, but. Uh, yeah. Gathar has been doing that, and now that you do that, he uh, the half elf just seems like less peeved about it. Um, and you see the dragon squinting as he examines the gemstone. This one is uh, very important to me personally, and I've pursued answers for uh, well, literally for centuries, but uh, figured wouldn't hurt to ask. Were you born on Plurna? Uh, as far as I know, but uh, the details of my exact birth are largely unknown. I was uh, discovered by uh, the couple who became my foster parents who are long since deceased. But, uh, I, you know, of course, in my youth, asked, you know, where am I from? Why am I different from everyone else? Why haven't I seen another one like me in the village? Uh, and they seem to, you know, in my wisdom, I understand they were deflecting. So my origins are largely unknown. Why do you ask? The dragons of Plurna comes in two different varieties. The chromatic dragons and the metallic dragons. The dragons of Daria, the ones I am witnessed, they are different from us. They... He pauses. It's like he's 
looking for the uh, pretty correct words. There is just this, uh, uh, this brief moment of silence. Um, Gathar starts going through his notes, but seems to be uh, to not find whatever he's looking for. And then Rosigami continues. We have been calling them gemstone dragons. The ones I have met have gemstones in their scales. This one. And he like lifts up a paw and all of his movements are very slow, very deliberate. And you figure that's basically necessary because if he wasn't doing that he could accidentally squish any of you just under the immense uh, size and weight of his body and despite uh, despite how big he is and how big his claw is when he taps it on the gemstone it's so delicate that you don't even hear the the, the clanking of the claw against the against the little pyramid shaped gem and he says this reminds me of one of them. Of a Ladarian gemstone dragon. I have seen one whose gemstones in its body had all the colors of the rainbow when light would pass through them. That is a most uh, strange. I have had this for uh, close to 400 years at this point, and Ladari is relatively a new discovery of Plurina. What you are saying is uh, there was some kind of Ladarian intermingling with Plurina 400 years ago at my birth? Um, forgive me for saying this. Uh, pardon me, your radiance. Uh, I have heard well, it's it's a crazy rumor, but I have heard that perhaps there was such an intermingling before Jamiel. Such an assumption is not as strange as you might think. After all, the two continents have a lot in common. Humanoid creatures exist on both. Dragons exist on both. Flowers, seas, clouds. Uh, these are very true. Perhaps not as uh, not as similar as some Plurinans would wish, but uh, you are right. Ladari is not a new place. It is what we believe to be a new discovery for us, but it has been here presumably for as long as Plurina. So, but uh, this is an interesting revelation. This is perhaps the first step I have taken in ever. Yeah. If, uh, However, these similarities may also simply mean that the same kind of gemstone exists on both continents. Do not take this as proof of a connection yet. Of course, it is a working hypothesis, we call it. Uh, I think he's like putting his hand on his chin in the, uh, in the pose that Talix has seen time and time again of like extreme pondering. <laughs> uh, if uh, either of you have any uh, questions for him, I, uh, I might uh, need a moment. And we um, have limited time. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, your radiance. Um, you seem to have traveled. Quite a lot to, around this new continent, perhaps further than most. Um, I am afraid you're oh, oh, something. Oh, voice changer isn't on. Oh no! <laughs> ah! Oh no! No, my voice! My immersion! <laughs> the, the, 
the curtain fell. <laughs> yeah, just I just put it back on. <laughs> Ralzius Gamir's like, no one can know. <laughs> Pay no attention to the woman behind the curtain. <laughs> I am horrible. <laughs> there we go. It's back. <laughs> Yay. Uh, I am blushing right now. <laughs> <laughs> I am afraid your assumption is incorrect. I have not gone as far as you think I have. Rather, it is these dragons that have come to me. So, Ludarian dragons travel the Zasberg Peninsula frequently. Those who have visited me have let me know the rules of Lidaria. The rule that concerns me is that the sky is the domain of the dragons. They live there. It is theirs. And I am not considered to be one of them. I may never fly up above the clouds where they exist. That's very interesting. Oh, that's... That raises a great many questions. Um... The rules of the peninsula are simple. We, who come from Plurna, may not build or live beyond the peninsula. And those of us with wings shall never breach into dragon territory up in the sky. Well, um, I have a question, Your Radiance, uh, concerning something that happened to me personally, as well as a couple of people we ran into. Uh, here, I have a couple drawings to show you. I'll pull them out. Oh. This is a man seen by three different people here in recent times when they uh, experienced uh, well, a violent blow that brought them near to death. I was wondering if you would have any idea who or what this is. He seems to be from Florida, not Lodaria. At least that's how he appeared. Gathar snatches up the drawing, if you let him. Sure. Uh, we'll hold it up uh, so that <clears throat> Rosia Gamir can see it better. Um, do you also, like, the, the drawing is just done with black ink. So do you, like, you, you'll have to describe the additional details, like the color oh, of sure. the skin and the hair color. Uh, you just make sure to, like... <clears throat> Sorry, ah, this dragon voice is really difficult to do. Uh, <laughs> uh, you just make sure to like let him know all the details, uh, everything that you have so far figured out about him. Uh, and the paper, like, it uh, swings back and forward every, every time Razigamir takes a breath in and then a breath out. Um, and eventually he just moves his head almost imperceptibly so. And Gathar returns the paper back to Talix and says... I have lived for thousands of years. 
Many, many years ago, there used to be a kind of elf that is now extinct and has been for a very long time. They used to dwell underground. They were called the Drow. And you believe this man is one of them? It looks just like I remember them. However, as I have said, they have been gone for a very long time. Well, this vision came to us in recent days. There can't be a coincidence. It must be real. Um, once again, returns his head and Gathar starts taking notes, uh, scribbling furiously uh, on his uh, on his little notepad. Uh, then, the uh, the enormous eyes of the dragon are back on on you. Um. Hmm. And uh, this dragon, or like any dragon, uh, they, they don't really have a lot of facial expressions. They just, they, they lack the, the, the muscles uh, and the muscle control that uh, the humanoid races would have. Um, so his expression for the most part has been uh, really just the same uh, with very minimal uh, changes to it. And it's uh, not... Because of this, it's hard to read him, but what you can see is when his expression does change a little bit. Um, so, this conversation seems to have sparked uh, uh, that kind of change uh, on his face. And he continues. If what you are seeing is someone who exists in the present day, then that would be quite a discovery. Oh, thank you for sharing your wisdom with me. I wish you luck. I am sure that for those who seek it, the truth will reveal itself. Does anyone have any more questions? Uh, yes. Yeah. Radiance. I, I will be brief. Where are the descendants of dreams found? Okay. <clears throat> His gaze shifts towards Tekka, who uh, speaks for the first time since uh, uh, you guys have gotten here. And uh, you, you see him thinking for a long time. Gathar starts going through his notes, but after a, just a very brief gesture with his head, he stops. Um, it seems that nothing in his notes uh, um, could answer this question. <clears throat> but uh, Brazil Gamir does, and he says, Sleep and the dreams, they are powerful forces. Those who understand them, those who control them, wield great power. The peninsula is for those who have been banished 
It is for those who are unwanted. The deepest, most powerful secrets of the continent will be found elsewhere. I understand. Thank you. Teacher, you may ask. Uh, give me a second, I have to process what the, what he has just said. Uh, that what you are looking for, Teka, lies deeper into Ladaria, not on the Zaspor Peninsula. Is that correct? Oh, uh, you're, you're asking the dragon? Uh, yeah. It is my belief. See. Si. Uh, well, then, uh, I think he, like, you know, goes back to his notes and scratches off, like, a shit ton more things. <laughs> uh, and is like, well, uh, I'm down to, uh, well, how many is this left, uh? Three questions? Uh, first of all, uh, these uh, gnomes that have uh, occupied this place and that we have seen uh, traveling the roads. Um, what, is, uh, what is going on with them? Uh, can you repeat the uh, question? I was looking uh, through my notes, gnomes. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Pontifex is saying the gnomes that we've seen in this town and that we've seen on the road. Um, like, what's their deal? Like, what are the What are they doing here? Because they're not they're not forming a colony of their own that we know of. What are they What are they here for? The road towards peace is a difficult one. The gnomes have wronged us, and we have wronged them many times over the course of history. Lidaria, this peninsula, is a chance to start anew. Those who work in my colony, they work to build the train station and the train way that will connect our colonies together. I have hired them for this. Those outside keep the colony safe. Not all work for me. Not all are paid by me. I see. Uh, I guess it is uh, reassuring to at least understand their purpose. Uh, okay, that is uh, at least two questions. Um, I think these are the biggest ones. Uh, first of all, uh, I have come here uh, to Ladaria uh, in search of an old friend um, on their recommendations. Uh, it is someone very dear to my myself and uh, to my friend here. Um, he's a affluent individual, uh, and I was wondering if perhaps you would know the name. Um, Aaron Moira. Uh, I I already asked about this. Oh, oh I didn't uh, that at all. By, not not during this meeting. Yeah, it was uh, yesterday, oh. like in game yesterday. Yeah. Um, oh. Githar holds up a finger, like to point it out, but uh, lowers it uh, when Rosgamer begins to speak and says, "I have made sure to research the name since yesterday. This individual has not passed through this colony, or at the very least, he left no evidence of having come through." I see. Uh, okay, well, that uh, simplifies this one. Um, I only have uh, one more question 
uh, left for you. This uh, this one is probably the most important uh, to us here, and uh, it is the most sensitive, you could say. Uh, I am remiss to talk about such things in uh, the presence of those not directly related to it. Uh, I would never seek to, uh, to disrespect you or the people that you keep, but uh, is there a possibility that these last five minutes can be had without your... Uh, I know not what to call you, Gathar. Me? Well, uh, I am Ms. Riddins' assistant. Your assistant, then. This is... Uh, I would never ask for this level of privacy if it was not... Uh, you, paramount. You want me to leave? I would like, yes. What? No, if, I, uh, I cannot do it. His uh, radiance will allow it. I must protect his radiance. I will not leave him alone in the presence of strangers. Rosigamir turns his head, uh, lifts a paw, um, taps him, and again it is surprisingly gentle, uh, with a claw over one shoulder, and, and says, I will be fine. And Gathar seems very displeased with his decision, but he just... He he puts his hands behind his back, and uh, um, he tries to maintain uh, a, a an emotionless expression. But you can see he's like very hurt, and then he walks off. I think uh, Pontifex will patiently wait until he's out of the room and the door has shut. Uh, there uh, isn't even a room; it's just this large area within a wooden nest. But like he walks oh. like far until it's like out of the, the main entrance okay. again I apologize for uh, whatever discontent this may have caused but uh, do maybe not this apologize Gathar sees myself as family he is very protective of me but it is incorrect to believe that you would, pa would pause any danger to me. The irony is not lost on me, I assure you. But uh, I guess to the matter at hand, I don't wish it for this to take longer than it needs to. Uh, Tekka, uh, I believe you have something that we should show our friend here. He's demonstrating a level of trust. I would feel it is only right to reciprocate. You are certain, teacher. Unless uh, you will have any qualms, in which case I would respect them wholly. I am not the arbiter of the group, but figure if there was anyone who would possibly know who would be impartial, it would be one such as him. You are not wrong. Hold. And, uh, yeah. Take a little, open his backpack and take out Journal Fleetfoot. <laughs> <Holly>. <laughs> Holly. <laughs> <laughs> the question that's been on the <laughs> Everyone who has laid their eyes upon this creature outside of our party has died a miserable death the same day. <laughs> we are perhaps Holy believing the this is the 14th deity. <laughs> oh man, yeah, the pangolin. That's totally... The pangolin. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Journal Fleetfoot. Mm hmm. Uh, you place the journal down on the table. Uh, do you open it? Yeah. Open it to the next blank page. This is... Uh, this is what remains of uh, one Jemuel Fleetfoot. 
and the the ink begins collecting on the page and seems to almost almost shake uh, before it finally settles into letters and and words. Do we see him start to type out your with a lowercase letter, then scribble yes. it out and capitalize it? It gets, yeah, it's it's not even deleted, it's more like there, there's gonna be like a little blob of uh, ink covering yeah. it up. Um, the, yeah, the, there is definitely a long pause that follows um, after... After the, the text appears on the pages in Rosigamir, uh, his enormous eyes go from left to right. It just It's such a small movement for him to read something so small, uh, but, but, but you see it, and he seems to hesitate. Explain to me how this is possible. I would love to. I would love to give you a several hour long dissertation on how this is possible, but uh, I have no idea. It is uh, why we are here. Uh, but this is... Our group was in pursuit of finding uh, the lost Jemul Fleetfoot, and uh, after encountering a very interesting locale, uh, we found what appeared to be the remains of him and his companion. And this book, which seems to contain his consciousness, uh, his memories are missing, but they are slowly returning with time. Um, my particular uh, college that I studied uh, arcane at is the College of Scribes, so you would think this is part of my wheelhouse, but uh, it is not. But this is... Jemuel's circumstances themselves, this uh, encapsulating a spirit into a book itself is, uh, of course, the thing I would wish to ask for, but it is probably more appropriate to, I don't know, inquire about Jemuel himself. If somebody like you, who specializes in this particular kind of studies cannot explain what is currently in front of us. I am afraid that I neither can I. Well, uh, those, uh, the bird pieces I showed you earlier, these uh, machinations that I told Sarah Beth about, uh, and I said they seemed to know what they were looking for. This is what they were looking for. I was alone at the time and in possession of the book of Jemuel. And uh, and my meditation, I noticed uh, they had flocked to my pack. They were picking it apart and vigorously trying to uh, release Jemuel's book from its binds and to escape with it. Fortunately, it was prevented, but... Uh, they knew what they were after. Machines must be built. Somebody made them. Somebody sent them. If more were to show up, perhaps they could lead you to their creator. It was my hopes with uh, blowing them into pieces and then salvaging what I could. I've only gotten the letters, the uh, the O T H, but uh, I figured it was best to not only warn you that these uh, machines have become hostile, but uh, that they are not just background characters at this point. They have uh, motives. There are someone pulling these strings. To view them as, or to continue to view them as harmless, is uh, likely a grave mistake. And well, aside from uh, our group, and now you, I had assumed we were the only ones to know of Jamil's circumstances, but uh, clearly whoever is 
the responsible for these birds. He's somehow aware of his affliction. Well, that's not entirely true. There's one who certainly knows of it. The one who Jamiel said killed him. Uh, we met uh, an unusual looking Ladarian uh, who, well, frankly, didn't look quite like any Ladarian I'd seen before. Uh, I he had nearly was... forgotten about the Sasuke Aaron. Yes, Sasuke Aaron, yes. Yes, he, uh, he knew. And he certainly is after the book for some reason. But I wouldn't have guessed that he'd be someone with uh, this sort of skill set. That's possible, though. He was an incredibly powerful user of Ladarian magic. You say that this individual is responsible for Jamuel's death. Share with me all information you have about him. You have it all in front of you on the table. As far as that, uh, that fellow... Aside from his name and, uh... Well, a couple of looks, we don't know much about him at all. Jamiel doesn't seem to remember much at all either. Why they were together in the first place. Unless anything else has come up in your in your memories, Jamiel? The convenient thing about your soul being encapsulated in a book is that your words are... Well, they are recorded. Oh, yes. Uh, Jamil's been keeping a bit of a log on everything we've been going through. And, uh, uh, forgive that you will only be seeing uh, one half of a conversation most of the time, but I'm sure you can infer. Uh, Ral Zilgamir will reach forward with one claw and delicately flip back towards the beginning. And then... as I s yeah, as I see Ral Zir squinting to read this book, a thought occurs to Talix, and he's going to uh, look into his backpack and dig to the very bottom. And just a quick question: uh, the uh, the unusual apparatus that uh, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, no. They're very large. The goggles. Oh yes. Um, I don't. I don't think they're quite large enough for him. They are not. Does it? Does it seem feasible that they might be for Ladarian dragons, or is it still like? If Ladarian dragons were to be the size <clears throat> of Razdiagamir, then no. Hmm. Uh, the goggles are clearly too big for you but far too small for him. Alright. That's it. Okay. <clears throat> um, it takes... It takes a little bit for Razia Amir to read through the... Um, through the thing. And you can tell he is skimming a little bit, but also um, 
He appears to be a fast reader, and uh, besides besides the fact that he he has his eye basically as close to the book as he can, um, and he has to like move back to flip every page and then get close again. Um, he otherwise seems to be going through the book just fine. And there comes a moment when when Gathar is like, um, you can hear his footsteps from behind, and he just calls out and says, "Ah, um, we're the, the meet the meeting sh should be over." Um, and uh, Razigami lifts one of his paws, and uh, the half elf walks back, and uh, um, the dragon continues on reading. Um, until he, uh, he seems done, he seems uh, satisfied. Um, <laughs> so, I saw, I saw your, what's on Discord. <laughs> They're all about the clouds. I was right. The dragon's <laughs> dropping bombs. <laughs> <laughs> what? De Dennis's tabletop simulator is being a little silly. Ah. <laughs> uh. Okay. Well, the dragon was talking about a land above the clouds, right? <laughs> <laughs> it is where I keep my spare building. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go on. I'm sorry. Magic can achieve the impossible. In my lifetime, I have seen people and dragons attempt things that have never been done before. Most failed. Sometimes they paid with their lives, but some succeeded. This progress has led to many or current spells and magical effect that we are aware of. I would not be surprised to learn that somebody has learned how to move a conscience, a soul, from a person to an item, and perhaps back from the item to the person. What is left to be understood is who caused this process to Jamuel. <clears throat> I see. Uh, I'm not sure where to go from here. Um, I'm surprised at the level of insight. This man has changed history forever. The discovery of Jamuel Fleetfoot changed everything for us and everything for Ladarians. He is important. His life, his memories, his knowledge. Many would do anything to get their hands on them. What you have there is precious. I must request that you keep him safe. Uh, of course, that is, uh, that is what has brought us here, and now 
I'm sure you understand the need for uh, privacy in this matter. With your permission, I shall discuss the matter of sentient objects with the rest of the council. Samuel's name shall not be mentioned. Uh, the Council? The Council of Dragons. Oh. Those who still reside in Plurna. My oldest friends. Oh. But, uh, yes, you, that would be most appreciated. Uh, I did not expect it to be taken so seriously, but uh, would, would you be willing to share any findings or uh, discussions about it that you may have? I have, and he like ruffles his back, I have a world port card, you could uh, send me a letter and... <laughs> this is, uh, of course, to save Jemuel, but... Uh, this specific thing you're mentioning, the transferring of a consciousness into an object is, um... Well, this is uh, what you could say a life's work for someone of my college. Um... Yeah. Uh, Rosigamir lifts his gaze for a moment and he goes over all of you. And then looks back down on the table and says... Place the card down. Gathar will collect your information later. It's fantastic. I have made two new powerful pen pals today. <laughs> this is wonderful. Uh, would uh, anyone else like to say anything regarding Jimuel or should we... Uh, did we leave this to the council? Well, I, I believe we've shared all of our knowledge, as little as it is. I certainly hope that that we could learn something new. Um, we certainly appreciate you taking this matter. <laughs> yes. Samuel is exceptional for many reasons. He braved the sea of chaos. He braved the lands beyond the peninsula. And nothing has ever stopped him before. His situation is concerning. Whatever happened to him has bested one of the strongest from Plurna. Hmm. Careful, I don't think he needs a bigger ego than he has, but uh, I'm inclined to agree. And I think that, uh, I don't know if you are, but uh, from what I gather, you were. If uh, Stars in Her Eyes was anything to go off. Oh, uh, well, I have you. Uh, Rosier, give me uh, your radiance, uh, whichever you prefer. Uh, perhaps you could answer a long question of mine, and you could put this uh, my need for this sequined thing to rest. Uh, what is the obsidian eye, and what does it do? <laughs> 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 Are you referring to Cleon's observatory? That is precisely what I am observe uh, re referring to. It. That is the word. <laughs> it is an observatory. <laughs> uh, do you know what they observe? Pontifex, we are past our time. 
Ah, oh, don't worry. You're right. Okay, that's fine. I have a robe for just this sort of thing. <laughs> oh, of course it is in the name. Of course they observe Tories, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I believe Tory is the name for a very large red wooden gate. Uh, it is very specific to use such a facility for, but uh, whatever. <laughs> the Maxis are weird. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. oh. Uh, one more final question. Uh, if you no. know, <laughs> professor, professor, is this no. This is potentially, but no, Telix, this is directly relevant we to you. I, I had forgotten life. about. Uh, Thank you. The, I heard rumors of, uh, of uh, some Teacher, kind of we a are through. <laughs> some we kind leave. of a plague, a pestilence. Uh, uh, people are dying <laughs> constantly. Uh, where is this? <laughs> I don't even know what you've asked. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, I have heard a rumor of yeah. multiple clerics rushing to deal with some kind of epidemic in one of the colonies. Where may this be? Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sorry. It's just. <laughs> Tekka, this leaving. is my rumor card. <laughs> uh, as Gathar mm. is co is coming back, and um, Tekka is leaving, and Talix has stood up uh, and is starting to like gather all the papers that are on the table that still belong to Pontifex, um, the uh, dragon will say, um, "Oh, thank you. That's a rumor." Um. Many healers have come through Vera, heading to the east. To my knowledge, something of the sort has taken place away from here. In the colony of Hanavari. This was a while back. I hope that it has been resolved. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, as that is in the opposite direction we are going. So, uh, best of luck to them. Uh, thank you so much for uh, <coughs> these final two questions. They were very important, I thought. <laughs> <coughs> Okay. Be safe in your travels. I would say the same to you, but it seems that uh, Gathar has that part covered. <laughs> uh, Gathar just proudly lifting his chin up, nodding. Uh, then he... Uh, copies down your details from your uh, Warpoint card and ends it back to you and then pretty much pushes you out uh, back <laughs> yeah, Thank you so much again for letting me go over time <laughs> And <there laughs> is... he's being shoveled out the door Yeah, you can see that there's like a couple of people that are in front of the entrance who were obviously waiting for their turn and they just glare at you as you come by and then Gathar just, just uh, breaks A nice them smile in. and a head bow Apologies, everyone. I have gone slow with age. <laughs> okay, I need water badly. Uh, <laughs> Go get it. You should have known this is coming. Putting Pontifex's meeting with the dragon and using the dragon's voice. <laughs> this is going to be <laughs> taxing. What was the location? Hanabari oh, is that Pip's colony? No, it's. Oh, okay. uh, it looks like it's all the way to the. Far right. Yeah, it's almost almost. Well, it is the eastmost. Do we want to bring up a map and take a break? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was Tekka from it. One of you is from the far east, like that, right? Here's your map. It I'm gonna go and break for ten minutes. Bye. Hello. Hi. Oh. Hello. Hi. I'm eating key lime pie. What? Oh. Pie over there. Okay. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is awesome and delicious. I have never made key lime pie, I don't think. It's not that hard. Pretty sure. 
Where do you even I get got, key limes? I got <laughs> pie I in I the face it. by a key lime pie when I was on Key West. That <laughs> happened. Is that like a tradition? Or... Uh, yeah, it's where it's from. <laughs> got it. But... It's, uh, it's the biggest island of the Florida Keys, and that's, that's where key lime pie is from. And yeah, oh. a thing that they did huh. there, um, I was at a bar there, and uh, one of the things that they do whenever it gets particularly rowdy is uh, they get these, like, small, like, smaller, um, like, hand-sized key lime pie and just, like, jam it in someone's face. <laughs> so I got key lime pied. I looked up where do you get key lime, and it and Google came up with grocery stores. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like, I, I've never seen a store stock key limes. I... One time as a kid, my mom got a hold of some key limes. And that's like the only time I've ever actually had them. Aren't they just like small limes that are like they're, especially they're, smooth? They're a little different, I think. They're basically small limes. But yeah, there's like small, small limes. limes. And I remember they were like, uh, like they're like perfectly round and like really yeah, smooth. Yeah, the rind is different. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very hard, like compared to a normal citrus. Well, and it, it are we back? Little... By the way, are we having this conversation <laughs> on stream? Yeah, that's part for the course at this point. It's no, okay. Can... Well, we must learn where we can find key uh, lime pies. The I'm grocery store. Too. Grocery. It turns turns out. <laughs> I love that Google answer. That sounds like a Bing it answer. It sounds very sassy. <laughs> it sounds like, like a yeah, 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 gives you the like an Southeast Asian <laughs> locale. Bing is like the grocery store. Right. I also don't know what you did, but all the buildings are back on the ground. I, I just, the same thing I did earlier. I just unloaded the map and loaded it back. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm. Uh, now you know about my secret uh, um, mirrored Vera colony in the sky. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna make a plugin, or I'm gonna like edit your scripting so that the buildings just gradually float up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the longer we're on the map, the more they just it. ascend. Yeah, yeah. Do that, and a dragon will swoop, swoop down, and be mad at you. Um, is there anything in particular that... Time. Is there anything... <laughs> uh, <coughs> our first campaign. And second. Uh, is there anything that Brook and Paper would uh, need to be dis uh, doing or discussing during that time? The rest of the party will be gone for uh, about 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I, please proceed. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Do tell. <laughs> the party had a 30 minute time slot, so the party was gone for 45 minutes. <laughs> you asked me something, I gave you an answer. <laughs> we were talking, not like you get to know what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to know if we need to roleplay anything. Yeah, I would like okay, to. Okay, good. I would love to hear Let's them roleplay talking about how much of a bastard Bonifex is. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps Probably. telling women to smile. Let me notice. <laughs> Unless they're gnomish women. <laughs> he says, just don't. <laughs> just <laughs> just don't. <laughs> just don't. <laughs> don't start. That was it. Oh, yeah, that's don't it. Don't start. <laughs> I had to check the quotes channel. <laughs> okay. Uh, please, go right ahead. Alright. Uh, since we're su only supposed to stay here for this day, I think at the story group would start packing his stuff and cleaning his sword with a claws, cleaning his weapon, all those shenanigans. And then after a little bit, check over to see how Pip is holding up. Pip is uh, sitting on one of the beds, uh, looking over that letter he received earlier uh, of the Urka toy store. And he's taking uh, a chunk of coal that he got out of his pouch and he's circling some things. Hmm. 
I think Brooke would uh, go over and I'm just going to assume there's a bed uh, in front of his bed. Sit down there. Pip, can I ask you something? Are you in a state of... And are you in a state to talk? <clears throat> um, yeah. You see uh, Squeak uh, crawls out from under Pip's shawl and, and uh, sits atop Pip's shoulder for uh, more clarity. <clears throat> um, if this gets too personal, feel free to stop me, but uh, was the incident with the gnomes your first near death experience? Pip is quiet for a few seconds and then looks over to Squeak on his shoulder and they both sort of give each other a look. And then Pip shakes his head. No. Can I inside check? <laughs> if I see the look, can I inside check? As in it was not his first. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, okay, never mind, I don't need to answer. So. <laughs> uh, do you want to tell me about that? Um, Pip very slowly reaches up towards the shawl on his neck and it's always very tightly wrapped around him and he takes a deep breath and sighs and then starts unraveling it. And when he pulls it down, you can see that around Pip's neck is a very tight rope. A noose and uh, on the back, a bit of rope still dangles down that sort of falls limp after he takes the shawl off. Uh, <clears throat> why are you wearing that? And from Squeak, you hear. I, well, I can't take it off. But this, this is what happens when you mess with, with people in power. Uh, I'm not sure if I've done this today before, but can I do the detect magic? Uh, I have done it before. Never mind. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, You've definitely done detect magic yeah, near today. Like... No, no. I mean, if I have done it today. Oh, you have done it today. Yes, during the investigation. Okay. Um. I'm. I'm gonna assume that's. A magical rope? <clears throat> Looking at it closer, you can see, um, you know, there's the part that is tightly wrapped around Pip's neck, and you can see where it's it's sort of chafed a bit. Um, but the the longer link that dangles downward, you can see that there are five knots tied into it, sort of one after the other, about you know six inches in between each knot, and. Uh, Pip just says, he, he nods and then says, more like cursed. What happened? <sighs> when this happened to me, when they pulled the lever and were about to hang me, Granny was the one who came in and saved me. But... Uh, well, I, I said some really mean things to Granny afterwards, and... Well, this is my punishment for it. Do you have to wear that forever? Sorry. No, uh, not forever. I'm... I'm... 
I'm getting I'm getting these things for Granny so that she'll she'll undo it, and then I can then I can speak again normally, and then then things will be better. Sorry if I misremember that, but Squeak was sent with you by your granny? Right? Yeah, yeah. I, she sent me out to get these these ingredients for for whatever it is she's making. But she knew that she knew that in order to get them I'd I'd probably have to be able to have someone on my side. And so for for good behavior, I got squeak. Eh, don't be too hard on yourself, kid. I'm just as bound as you are. <laughs> so you have to do something for your for the grandme as well, Squeak? Or what do you mean by bound? <laughs> yeah. What, uh, you think I'm here for fun? I mean, maybe you did something bad as well. And now nah, you're nah, 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 nah. <clears throat> it's all contractual obligations. You I know, you, you work one contract, you try and work your way up the field, you know, get a big name out for yourself. You know, I just want to be, I want to be uh, uh, the big devil on campus, you know, like my dad. Squeak Ashtarok Senior. Of course. Um, have you tried to remove that rope with magic? Do you know what happens if you try to remove it? Uh, I don't know what I could do. Well, we have come across some pretty strong magic users here, right? Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, but I don't see anything you could have said to your granny that, uh, that calls for this kind of punishment. I, what I said was really bad, and, and I, this, I mean, I deserve this, but, you know, Granny's, Granny's been really good to me. She took me in when no one else would. She's not a bad person. I would like to look at Squeak for confirmation or not. It's hard to tell the facial expression of a rat. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right, that's fair. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I did not expect this <laughs> when I wanted to stay back. But I'm... Don't, don't I'm, tell anyone. Why not? We have people here who are very willing to help you. I mean, it's your business, so... Did you hear what the Lady of the Land said? I asked her about this when we first talked to her, and she said that this, it's something I have to do myself. I have to undo it myself. And you trust that lady? Well, why wouldn't I? She gave me, she traded rocks with me. That is a sign of trust that you, you cannot shake. Fair, fair. Uh, well, I'll keep that in mind for future deals. Um, but yeah, I I don't have to tell the others. That is not my story to tell. So, thanks for sharing with me. Um, 
Are you... Hmm, how do I phrase it? I have noticed... You know what, let me start this. I think during the gnome accident, the way you acted was actually pretty smart. I'm gonna assume that you have hit often before? Well, I, I sort of have to. I mean, the people who did this to me... There, there's part of who I am... There's a part of who I am that people just don't like. And people think is evil and wrong. And they're willing to kill people for it. For... He, he whispers witchcraft <sighs> you know what it's really sad to see that after this year long war we had on the planet or on the lands where Talix Pontifex and I are from was kind of exactly about this about the same thing like there were two kinds of magic my magic, not the Ladaria magic, but my magic, and then the magic that Telex uses. And the two sides of that magic have been, or were fighting, because they didn't agree on it, right? And you would think after that war passed over, that things would become more peaceful, but Ladaria is not too different from how pluralized when it comes to these kind of I am <clears throat> well I wouldn't say I'm the same but I've had very similar problems and well I noticed how upset you were especially at Pontifex I do believe that this group especially has each other's best, well, at least good interests for each other in mind as well. You're pretty... I, I mean, I don't know for sure. And it is very easy to be betrayed by people, but from the vibes I've been given from them from, from the past few weeks, I do think that... They're good people. Deep down. They have their own little specialties. I'm pretty sure you've noticed those. Yeah. And they don't always act correct in every situation. But neither do I, obviously. I so... know. It's just... I I narrowly avoided death once before, and that's only because Granny was there. And she's not with me this time. And that was really close. Yeah. It was. I... When they started shooting at Pontifex, I did think that the only outcome would be either dead or in some kind of jail. So we got very lucky. Definitely thanks to Telex and Cerebus. Yeah. Brazil Gamir <laughs> said <laughs> we're kind mm. of still alive. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is that while you can be angry at Pontifex for what he did, and I think you have the right to be angry. I do believe that second chances, especially after what Pontifex has shown on reflections he did, are a thing worth giving. Yeah. You're right. 
Also, when you go on these kind of adventures, I know you're still a kid, but these lands are not safe. <laughs> so the chances of... They're not. Yeah. They're really you... not. Yep. Yep. But what I can do for you is that at least as long as I am with you and you feel like it's right to stick with me slash us, I, as a phantom, do protect people. I am... What we phantoms do is we protect from whatever. Could be an animal, could be other people. It could be something unknown. So, stay with us. Stay close to me if you want to. And observe what we do. See the mistakes we do and learn from them. That way you don't have to do the mistakes yourself. Okay. I like that. And I hope Tekka stays too. I like him a lot. Maybe even more than you. <laughs> uh, you know what? That is very... I like Tekka too. Just make sure you let him know. Okay. Are you okay not seeing the dragon? Um y yeah, I'm I'm fine. Alright. Then keep looking at and I look over twice. Yeah. <laughs> and... He's he circled like like four different marbles and uh <laughs> there's like a particular mechanical uh animal that he's been looking at. Yeah, uh, uh, keep going through that. <laughs> Shortly after that uh, uh, is when the rest of the party returns. Uh. <laughs> Pip wraps up the, uh, the 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 loose end of the rope and puts his green shawl back on over his neck. Wait, hey Squeak, I was just thinking, eh? you wouldn't happen to be the son of a Squeakostrox good senior, would you? Yeah, that's my dad. Oh. <laughs> oh, of course! Everyone knows Quikostrox Senior. <laughs> <laughs> Love hey. that guy. <laughs> yeah, hey, you know something funny? <laughs> What's that? I was in a church today. Of course, he didn't burst into flames. Yeah. <laughs> My dad probably would. I just gotta work on that. You know, because he's Not so canon. evil and menacing. And yes. you have to work on <laughs> so bursting into flames? <laughs> yeah, my unholiness. <laughs> <laughs> I must not be a good devil if I don't burst into flames <laughs> in a church. Uh, okay, it is around 6 p.m. in the evening. Um, what is the party's plan? Well, Tekka. as far as I know, we've already stocked oh. up. Oh, go on. Okay. Tekka. What is it? I've been commanded by Brooke to tell you that I like you a lot and I hope you stay. You can hear from the background a really big face. <laughs> <laughs> and going straight up so to a loud <laughs> slap noise. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. And Brooke, after that, continues to cl clean his already clean katana. <laughs> <laughs> Just wiping off the metal at this point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Making it thinner and thinner. <laughs> Pip, I enjoy your company as well. My intent this morning it was to show how important our lives our missions our goals are we do not have the time to help each and every one 
as we pass through these towns, these outposts, these villages. But this day, I understand what you said to me that this morning. The importance of staying together and what Rasil Gamir said. The importance of what we're holding, what we are protecting, may be more important than what I thought. Well, good. I'm I'm glad you're staying, and and we'll we'll get to learn more about dream stuff soon because we're gonna we're gonna head out to Simalea Leal on. <laughs> <laughs> right? I could not have said it better myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have gained many answers. We should have a meal together, then discuss what we have learned. I would like to leave tomorrow, but I will not leave without you all. Are, are we here? Or is this... Everyone's I mean, here. Everyone's here. Okay. Oh, that sounds agreeable to me. Yep. I'm Maybe we can finally get an uninterrupted night's sleep. Before we get back out on the road again. <clears throat> okay. Uh, if you'll have one more chance in between this session and the next, if you realize you forgot to buy something, we can like retroactively say that you got it this evening. Uh, if it's like something basic, but like beyond that, uh, uh, you, you will be done, you will be gone. Uh, but for tonight, you guys uh, can. You're just gonna have dinner here at the inn. And you're going to stay an extra an extra day, which is going to cost an extra bit of money. How much? Uh, I lost my notes. <laughs> Five copper. Sounds like your cat's trying to remind you. Three electrum. Yeah. Uh, four silver per person per bed. Okay. So we all pay four silver. Done. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, I would like, as you guys retire for the night, uh, um, I would like to ask for a perception check from everybody. Oh no. <laughs> you jinxed the Jason. <laughs> <laughs> a giant bird albatross comes over the house and picks it up. <laughs> they become progressively Those houses bigger. Weren't flying. They were being carried. <laughs> you said perception, right? Yes. No. It was good and then it wasn't. Does Squeak get one? Oh, uh, sure. <clears throat> Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, so late into the night, uh, just a few hours before sunrise, um, like right around the time, um, like just before the time when uh, uh, Pontifex would just naturally wake up, uh, um, but it, it, it's just before that. Uh, is the moment when uh, um, some of you, Pip and Tekka, hear a faraway noise somewhere outside of your room, outside of the inn, even outside of the colony. Uh, it's not a sound close enough or loud enough to 
actually wake you up. It's just more like you you both happen to be uh, in a in a moment of very light sleep when that sound happened, and so it caught your attention and just brought you back to a state of wakefulness. And it it, it, it caught your attention because uh, uh, what you heard was a sound of uh, a howling wolf. Pip, um, to you, to you who can naturally understand animals and be understood by them, this howling doesn't translate to anything comprehensible. Uh, which is what happened last time, right? Yeah. Oh no. Did, did what direction did it seem to come from? Uh, compared to the way your room is... Uh, Oriented, you'd be able to tell that it comes from the west. <clears throat> oh no. Tekka, are you awake? You heard it too, Pep. There's another one. There's not another of the same? I think so. Guys? Okay. Everyone, uh... rice. <gasps> there. Yeah. There's it's another. The bird and just shut the window. Another? <laughs> another wolf. It's in the direction of the farms. Attacking the farms. <clears throat> uh, I think Brooke would jump up immediately. All right, let's go. Uh... Get your stuff. <laughs> Go. Never want to pass up a money earning opportunity in pursuit of sleep. Is there Where some water? <laughs> Around. Okay, no, 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 no. This is not a money. Okay. Yes, Jeff. We're not water. making money. We're not going to kill this one. I'm going to make sure of it. <laughs> oh, we're not. Uh, Pip. Yeah. Pip opens the window and uh, takes Squeak, the, the rat on his shoulder, and yeets him outside. <laughs> and uh, Squeak in midair is like, whoa, hell, I was up to... And then... <laughs> and turns into a raven. <laughs> and uh, Pip will say, Brooke, carry me! And then goes into a trance and just slumps onto the floor. <laughs> Brooke, carry me! Blah! And blacks out. Blah. Whoa, what, what was that? What just... <laughs> Look, you understand what just happened? I, I, I don't know. Um, I'll pick up. Uh, I uh, I pick up Pip. <laughs> I find it with Pip it is best to avoid questions and just go with it. <laughs> I would. I would. I don't know. I. Do you think it's probably not? They do that always in the movies, right? When someone is unconscious and then they put him on the back. But I feel like if that would happen in real life, they would just fall over backwards. Yeah. <laughs> so, I um, so I guess Pip, I'll carry you with both my uh, arms. Pip also does hold on. Like, he doesn't seem completely unconscious. Oh. He still has, like, some... Yeah, he's still, like... When you when you grab him, he, he holds back onto you. So he's a lot more stable than he would have imagined. Okay. Um, well, I'll take out my sword. In one hand, hold Pip on the back with the other hand. Oh, he's not unconscious <laughs> now. I can fix that. <laughs> and pulls his sword. I guess for comfort, I have to leave my shield back then because I can't hold the shield and have him on the back and have Pip on the back. So and then I'll rush out towards the farm. Just mount him to your okay. shield. Alex uh, will get his chainmail out. So, be, so uh, you all rush uh, um, across the bridge and towards the farms uh, with Squeak getting there um, a little earlier than everybody else just flying in a straight line in that direction. And I'll need a perception check from Squeak. All right. Uh, you it said is, a raven? Is, is it still dark? Squeak yeah, it's, dark it's before dawn. Even as a raven? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> uh, its statistics are the same. Okay. Except cool. for speed changes. So he has dark vision for 120 feet. 
just trying to get like an aerial view and Pip will like relay to the group. If, if Squeak sees something, then Pip will say it out loud, though he can't, mm -hmm. though Pip can't like hear anything mm -hmm. that the group may be saying too. The 16 is the, the perception roll? Yes. Okay. As far as Squeak can tell, um, nowhere around the, the farms, uh, does he see any commotion? or uh, any wolves, uh, he does see that some people have uh, turn on, turned on the porch light and are outside. Um, what? For... Hmm? Wait, do we have porch lights? They're gnomes. There's like lanterns. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm sure porch I mentioned gnomes. lanterns before. Uh, <laughs> the um, one uh, person that uh, Squeak would recognize is Fortis, uh, holding up a lantern, and he's sitting on like uh, a fence that is around his property, and he's looking uh, towards the the west. Um, the rest of you, as you come uh, as you come towards the area, uh, you would run into him, and him seeing you guys approach would. Uh, um, just yell out. You guys have heard that too, uh, right? You heard that? Yes. Have anyone spotted it? No. No, it... It sounds like it's in the forest still. Right. Uh, don't go after it. We'll take care of it. Um. Have they ever announced themselves like this before? No. It kind of sounds like... Sounds like it's crying. What? We'll take care of it. <laughs> I'll give it something to cry about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we killed its mate, maybe. Oh to finish the job. Oh no. <laughs> I'm not sure if we should bring Pip. He will just translate it for <laughs> No Don't worry, ends. I can't understand it, which means it's killable. Oh, okay. <laughs> are, are you sure you don't want me to come? I mean, uh, the previous one, I, you know, I, I, I shot it through the head and it still lived. Uh, <clears throat> can you refresh it though? Uh, can you repeat that, Dennis? If I can speak over you, Jason, then yeah, can you defend yourself? Uh, uh yeah, I've got my my dad's crossbows. Does he wear like any kind of armor? No. Look, um, please don't take this the wrong way, but. No, no, I get it. You don't have to say a word. I nearly died last time. Uh, be Look, careful, though, okay? And if something goes wrong, you'll be the one to defend your own home, right? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Just Alien stay and are still sleeping. Um, I wasn't sure whether, whether to wake them up. But uh, I guess we should be awake for this, yeah? In case it comes over here? Maybe so. Okay. We'll do our best. Yeah, alright. Um, thank you. Uh, good luck. Thank you. If it starts to approach the farms, we should lead it to the trap. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I right. remember, yeah. Uh, it's still there. As far as I could see, it hasn't been uh, uh, triggered by anything. Uh, Squeak returns and, and Pip, uh, Pip uh, gets out of his trance and just says, uh, Yeah, take it to the noose! <clears throat> hey Pip, were, were you <laughs> sleeping? No, I was... Yes. Okay. We just All woke right. up. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> then I'm, I'll go wake up my family and he hops down the fence and looks back towards the forest with like this, this weird expression um, you, can tell, you can tell he wanted to go uh, but he he understands uh, what 
the better idea is, and he goes inside his home. And you are free to head to the west. Oh, Into the woods. Into, Into the, the woods. woods. <laughs> Into the woods. Um, every once in a while, you hear it again, uh, that same howling. And you're able to, sort to uh, adjust your direction every time this happens. Uh, and it's moving. You're going one way at some point, then you're going another way at some point. Still heading to the west, but adjusting a bit more to the north, a bit more to the south. Uh, uh, just following this howling that's taking you further, further to the west. Um, until, you, uh, until you guys find that the surroundings around you, uh, you've, already see you've already seen these before. You have returned uh, to the path you have walked the first time. And it seems like you're approaching the area where you had um, originally seen... Uh, uh, seen this wolf. Um, Can Pip stop everyone for a second? Yes. Just like stretch his hands out and 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 halt everyone real quickly mm -hmm. and just just say, um, wait. R remember that that hawk bear. It was able to mimic sounds like this too. It might not be a wolf. True. It might be something luring us here. Okay. Were you able to understand the bear last time? Um, I was. Oh. Just proceed with caution, as they say. We shall. I don't know who says that. <laughs> Um, and, uh, Pip, just as you had that thought uh, in your mind, and you guys slow down a little bit uh, and uh, push forward into the forest, uh, um, there comes a moment where you spot it, a hawk bear, just a little bit further ahead in the trees, um, and you come to, to, to this sudden halt, and you wait, trying to understand if it saw you. Uh, but it only takes a few seconds of just uh, the adrenaline washing uh, over you and away from you as you realize that what you're seeing are... <laughs> uh, is Pip still in your back? <laughs> no. Uh, what you're seeing are the remains of a hawk bear. Bitten, clawed, and torn. Dead in a pool of blood and scattered feathers. That answers that question. Yep. But, uh, ah. <laughs> seem to recall uh, these being pretty fear. <clears throat> that so is, I don't know if like... this is good or bad. Can I try to discern if it looks like one of these large gem wolves is what killed it? Yeah, um, that would be uh, your choice between medicine and nature. My choice, you say? I, I, that is what I said. Yes. <laughs> I'm rolling it. 21. Ooh. Uh, on nature. There is no doubt in your mind. Uh, the the kind the bites and claws uh, definitely match the kind of wolf that uh, you guys have fought previously. Uh, you you even find a little bit of, of a ruby uh, near the body. All right. There's another one of them. Can we please try not to kill this one? What do we do with it? I'll try to figure something out. Just... If it doesn't work, you know... Then, then what? Do what you want. Okay. <clears throat> you are pretty How much are follow- gonna... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. We're done. <laughs> Are we gonna tie it up somehow? We could. I've got rope. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I got a rope as well. <laughs> the next time you if hear could... howling, it's closer. 
it's a lot closer. Okay, <laughs> shh. Everyone, get ready. Keep you your are... eyes all around. You are... Uh, uh, yeah? <laughs> is it... It sounds closer. Is there like... Can we hear sound like approaching? Like rustling brush or something? Roll a perception check. I mean, I, I feel like we'd all be listening out at this point, right? I mean... Oh, Ooh. natural 20. Yeah, you're all listening out uh, um, with with an at 20 list to go off of that, but you're all uh, you're all absolutely being cautious and just keeping an eye, uh, uh, an ear out, rather. Um, and uh, what you've been hearing so far this whole time was just howling, just far away howling that started to sound closer and a little bit closer as, as you gain the ground on uh, on this wolf. Um, and by the time you hear, you're almost at the same spot where you fought the first wolf. Uh, when you hear a howling near that area, um, Pontifex, you do hear some shuffling, just a little bit, like bushes being disturbed. Uh, b low branches being moved aside. You are no more than perhaps uh, uh, two or three hundred feet away from this uh, far away uh, noise that you're hearing in the direction of the howling. Uh, but you are already almost at the area where you fought, where you fought the wolf. So it appears that what you're hearing is just a little bit beyond that. Um, then Pontifex's plan is to, uh, is to try to, like, keep a, a, like, a sensory track of it, and to, like, I guess, ready or cast Bless whenever it's within, like, a hundred feet of us. It's, you know, to his best estimate. I'm not seeing anyone's minis. <laughs> uh, usually put them on everyone's table, like in the middle. Yeah, we did get bumped up the last map. Well, <clears throat> no, because the ones on the map are not the actual minis. They're separate. Yeah, if we used to have like our actual full size, because the ones on yeah, the map were, were downscale. Those. We had our full size oh, ones on our. I have mine. Our table. In my. Is it in a chest? Yeah, everyone's in the is, is in their chest. I probably did that <laughs> when like cleaning up the table. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, mine's not in my chest. Uh oh. Uh. Oh, someone holding it in their chest. hands. Yeah. Does anyone <laughs> have Pontifex in their hand? <laughs> oh, you know what? Maybe white. Is it in yours? No. Oh no. Oh, Pontifex, uh, no. Can everyone <laughs> press H to toggle your hand uh, just to make sure it's not, uh, you don't have it? Nope? Nope, I see mm. nothing. Okay, you're going to temporarily beat this bishop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have your... Come okay. back. Ah, shit! Ah, whoa, there I've he is. Uh, oh, I have a pip. Okay, I've good. Got myself, I've got myself. He's, he's a shadow Pontifex. A <laughs> shadow pip. Yoink! <laughs> I accidentally dealt those out, but yeah, I knew I had uh, extras saved in here. Eh. Okay. Uh, what am I supposed to do with this shadow pip? Keep give it, it to me on this side of the table, please. Thank you. Uh, here's a proper Pontifex. He's so small. I know he's... <clears throat> All right. Uh, uh, uh. Should we be rolling for initiative? Oh no, not yet. Okay. Um, Why do we need to do that? We're not fighting, <laughs> right? We're just gonna have a nice conversation. I'll try. <laughs> for 
further up ahead, uh, the terrain is... Uh, this is where the terrain begins to be a little uneven, as uh, the area past <clears throat> there, to the west of it, uh, starts to become a series of gentle hills. The branches around you sway in the wind left and right, left and right, and it feels almost as if the trees are whispering among themselves. In the low light of the moons shining above you, uh, further up ahead, a figure stands. Uh, a humanoid, wrapped tightly in a dark brown cloak. He has his back turned towards you. Um, he speaks, and none of you understand him. But after a few seconds of silence, he speaks again. This time in Ezenfair, which... Correct me if I'm wrong, I believe Tekka is the only one who speaks it. Yeah. Uh, so Tekka, um, to you, it feels like this man is spitting out the words that come out of his mouth. Foreigners, are there any of our languages that you've bothered to learn? I speak this language. I understand. He turns around. Um, you can't really see much of his uh, of his features as he's uh, just fully enveloped in this cloak. Uh, and from underneath the hood, um, you can tell he's from the way he's turned. He's glaring straight at you guys. Uh, he doesn't seem to have anything on him. Uh, he doesn't seem to have any bulk under his clothes that would. Uh, that would show that he has any armor, he doesn't seem to have weapons, a backpack, uh, uh, just just clothes on his back. You're the ones who did it. Yes. Why? Oh. Uh, Tekka, what's going on? This person asks if we killed the creatures in the forest. We did it because they were harming others. Nonsense. They wouldn't hurt people. Speak the truth. That is the truth I know. You may have another. It takes a very long, very deep breath. Someone is missing. Someone else was here. Who? Who was with you? I will not say. They deserve to be safe. They are not the ones you are looking for. If any, you are looking for us. For your vengeance, if that is what you seek. The man um, brings his hands, a little shaky you can see in the moonlight, uh, um, up to his hood and then brings it down. And you all can see that this man is a Lidarian uh, from the number of, uh, of Vox, uh, two of them coming out from the sides of his chin, a series of three very small ones uh, uh, beneath each eye uh, on the cheekbone, kind of going sort of like upward towards uh, uh, his ear and uh, <clears throat> uh, the light of the moon is bright enough where you can distinguish some colors and some uh, uh, amount of uh, uh, a shine to his uh, vox that uh, uh, they look like they are made out of rubies. Then it would be fair to say that your lives are mine to take 
For you took the one of my wife and of my children. Oh. Taka, are you telling them that we want uh, that we come in peace? Yeah, it is too fine. late for that, Talix. Are you sure? It is too late. <laughs> <laughs> Where does I don't he stand? Know what's going on, but uh, are we? Is this? Uh, are are, are we setting a time for dinner? What? <laughs> where are we where, having a conversation here? Winter, where does he stand? About eighty feet away from you. We killed the one he loved most. Should I hurl a fireball? No. I don't know what he's doing. He's just standing there. <laughs> In the <laughs> <sink. laughs> Where is her body? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have some pieces of it, but the butcher has oh. the rest. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Can we have a do-over? <laughs> <laughs> oh god. You do not want that answer. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Good That's answer. the worst thing you can say. Good answer. This oh, is no. family feud. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> Oh I God. do want to know. Where have you buried her? You buried her somewhere. <laughs> there was no bur burial. You left her to be eaten by the hawk bears, like my children. Please say yes. <laughs> <laughs> have we clarified he's referring to the dog? <laughs> oh yeah. What? Well, he's Have actually we just not gotten to about? the assumption that he's married to a wolf. <laughs> we we kind of just went on the assumption that they're lycanthropes, but what if yeah, what if it's just a big misunderstanding? <laughs> Please God, yes, let it be a misunderstanding. <laughs> and you we must be savages. And there's nothing we could say to stop your grief or your sorrow. If a struggle is the only means of expressing your grief, then we have nothing more to speak of. What are you saying? What are you saying? <laughs> I'm saying that there is no way out of this for either of us. He takes. We. Oh, yeah. go ahead. Go on. Go on. Go on. I didn't mean to talk over you. I thought you were done. What we have done cannot be turned back. We have to face the consequences now. He takes one step back away from you. It's slow, it's careful. It's, it's clear that this man uh, is keeping just a very close eye on you. You can see his hair uh, is bright white, but he just he seems he seems young, uh, too young to um, to just have uh, uh, lost the color of his hair. Um, and uh, he takes another step backward, his eyes are still on all of you. He shakes his head and says, I need time to bury my children. If you have any sense of honor, then you will let me do that. No, we didn't. Yeah, I don't know what this kid, this thing has kids is. <clears throat> we do not know your situation, but I tell you the truth. When 
We only killed one of your kind, and know nothing of what happened to the rest of your family. What do you think happened to the rest of my family? We're nothing but cubs. The hawk bears got to them once their mother was gone. I was away for only a few weeks. Only a few weeks! Just to find a good place for us to stay in. A safe one. It... It wasn't... Be on your way. Go. Leave. Now! He tells us to leave. Can you say we're... There's no way out? Let's leave. Let's go. We killed a mother. We are responsible for the deaths of his children. There is no way talking out of this. We go. Wait, he's blaming us for his children's death? Professor, come. They had no guardian teacher because of us. Oh. Oh, I see. You said these are... Uh... Okay. You're beginning to back away? Take a death, please. Okay. And so does he, but uh, he's... He doesn't turn his back on you. He just keeps stepping back, keeping his eyes on you. And then he, uh, he says one more thing. He says... It won't be today, and it may not be soon, but one day, I will find you, and I will kill you. He will be back for vengeance to take all of our lives. Not now, but later. And we're backing off? I died. Brooke. Do you feel justified to kill again? If he's going to kill us later. <laughs> it, uh, I, just to make sure I'm understanding the situation, his wife was the wolf that was attacking children. Yes? We don't know what the situation first. was. It Before... could have been to protect her cubs. Before your they eyes, uh, about a hundred feet away from you now, um, you see um, this man uh, slowly start to shift. His skin stretches across his muscles as they begin to swell. Uh, even from this distance, you can hear the sound of bones grinding and breaking, uh, bending beyond their limits, and then rearranging themselves and fusing them back together. You see this thick white fur, um, streaked with uh, rubies here and there, just pushing through his skin, uh, covering his entire form. Um, you see his gums uh, bleeding as his teeth lengthen into red fangs, uh, just like his nails do as they turn into red claws. Uh, <clears throat> by the time uh, a, a bushy tail pushes through uh, a slate in his pants, and he's uh, uh, bending forward a little bit, leaning, and despite the, the position, he's taller than he was before. Um, Something halfway between a wolf and a man uh, makes eye contact with each of you before running off. And that's where we'll end the session. Okay. <clears throat> I wish now I we're fighting a devil wolf? Werewolf? The only thing I have seen break its own bones and rearrange in shape is our own squeak. <laughs> is this a relative? Just a Ladarian. It's a Ladarian <laughs> wolf. A Ladarian <laughs> wolf. It's a Ladarian wolf. 
Hey, Squig, do you know him? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you both break your bones and reshape yourselves. You know each other? Is it like a club? <laughs> hey, guys. It turns out we didn't kill an endangered wolf. We killed a sentient woman and her children. I'm gonna be honest. If she was sentient and actually a human, she could have turned back and talked. <laughs> she, I mean, she could have said... Hey, she I'm was brained by a rifle, a so. Was, the, was one of the moons full on that day? I don't remember. <laughs> Where's don't our we moon have, chart? like, moon calendars? <laughs> According to the calendar, yeah, yes, one of them was. Something doesn't feel right. <laughs> it just doesn't feel right. Like... Like we murdered a woman? No, <laughs> like, why was she... Because, like, they were stealing livestock and stuff, too. I'm guessing they were like taking livestock they wouldn't do food. if they wanted to stay out of... out of the way. Yeah. I'm guessing it Maybe was... The cubs were they're taking it. livestock for food for the cubs, because clearly these are young. Like, this is a recent development. Uh, but there's, like, f there's food out here? <laughs> mm. Why... why endanger themselves? Something well, feels wrong to me. Maybe they like, didn't think they were endangering themselves until a pompous kid stole a rifle and went after them to try to solve the problem. But the rifle can't hurt them. So why but would... The kid didn't... <laughs> didn't the kid shoot it in the face? Yeah, but the rifle, like, literally can't hurt them. <laughs> oh. oh, I think it hurt. Yeah, I thought it was, like, literally bleeding it, like, out it, of its like, face. It hit its face and then just didn't hurt it. Oh, right? no, I thought it was, like, bleeding profusely from its head. It yeah, was. I think it was wounded, yeah. Yeah. That rifle it just didn't finish it. <clears throat> mm. Poor shot. Seems to be a recurring thing with rifles. <laughs> oh, man. Well. It probably would have died several weeks later. Oh, and then the werewolf like... would be after the gnomes. Oh, we missed the <laughs> good ending. Can we right. reload an old save? <laughs> can, can we revert back to the start of the conversation with the werewolf missed, and just blame the, the gnome? Run. <laughs> blame Who the was gnomes. with you? Oh, it was just a whole battalion of gnomes with their guns. They shot her. We just eased the passing. But it was the gnomes that shot her. They're just very we'll small just have people. To lean heavily into the genocide run now. <laughs> yeah, just kill everyone we come <laughs> Is that no, what I was a protester want? back in the day, but uh, I'm starting to understand. <laughs> no. Oh, boy. That's, All right. Well, that's quite a development. Uh, yeah. Quite a uh, few developments this session. Yeah. Thank you to everyone who's well, been watching the stream. She shouldn't have been killing kids. <laughs> I, I shouldn't have I'm assuming... Since there is a full moon, it's a standard lycanthropy, like, boss control situation. But I don't know if our characters know anything about that. <laughs> Do lichens exist in Flurna? Well, we'll go over all this next time. Okay. That's a question of lycanthropes. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, I'm gonna end the stream here. <laughs> all right. Thank Fun. everyone for watching. <laughs> Fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. thanks everyone who's watching the stream. Bye. Or the VODs. Bye-bye. Stream over! Uh, oh no! <laughs> Can I just repeat what just happened? Well, we well, had like well, a big bus. The consequences of our actions. <laughs> we had like you, a big you. bus in front of us that clearly wants to kill us and we said, Okay, you have time to prepare. Come back when you find <laughs> us one by one. <laughs> Hey, it's going hey, over to screaming over Maybe we can finally kids. have a good night's sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had, we let him. We just suffer. found out that we killed a woman and her children. Yeah, just wait till you guys find out till he killed like what was his name again? Furster? The kid? That was already Fortis. Fortis. Um they killed Molly. An alien. <gasps> Those mother. I will. Now we're just gonna wait for the for the dog man to sniff these things down. Look, I'm just saying they weren't innocent in all this <laughs> either. <laughs>
If someone else knew Essenfair, you could have had that conversation <laughs> taking a different direction. <laughs> uh, where is my wife? Uh, you don't want it. No. <laughs> oh, you want to explain in great detail of it, then? Oh, yeah, that's going to go well, well. First, we cut off her fangs and her claws. She is we no longer her to with us. shop where she was turned into mincemeat and ground beef. Then we sold her gemstones, crushed some of them down, sold them to various shops, and now we each have the, the blood money in our pocket. Here, I'm so I here drew a picture. I, I gotta have a say. a large amount of her teeth and fangs, and like I would offer to give them back but i need these for spell components maybe so i was gonna say i never thought that this party would kill the wolf uh i was i didn't want certain to. it wouldn't have happened but then not only was the wolf dead but the fur bog is bloodthirsty <laughs> Did I she was, did I the last bit? She was I don't know, I have pieces. the wolf's token in my chest. Is the chest our, our kills? Yes. I'm pretty sure that I didn't hit a single... Uh, that I didn't hit a single swing. Yeah, it was Ponifex. He, he blasted it. it with an acid ball that it, like, exploded yeah. from. You brought her to a butcher. Yeah, yeah. that was uh, pretty... Well, you know... I mean, that's the the complicated thing, though, is, like, in normal circumstances, I'm sure we wouldn't have killed the wolf, but, like, it was literally about to kill two kids. Like, yep. the kids were on death's door, so it's like, oh, we better kill this thing. We don't have time to tie it down. I know. And I've yet to throw a big damage spell in the campaign <laughs> at the time, and there is a perfectly good target, and I have a perfectly good second level spell <laughs> slot. <laughs> so... And I think I had Bless at the time, so, like, it was all lined up, and, I mean... I'm, I'm so not okay, saying... Guys. I'm not saying, and I will never say, that you made the wrong or the right choice. I did it to save Brooke, because he but couldn't was... save himself. He couldn't hit the broad side of a tree, and I think Tekka, like, tripped it five or six times. <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to get it off the kids. Yeah, that was the combat. It was, it was a hard mostly... choice. The was other Brooke difficult missing, thing Tekka was that... tripping and magic explosions and that was the combat <laughs> the other difficult thing was that like this was like the only beast that pip had ever come across that he couldn't understand yeah and so that was like well this thing i guess it's a monster then <laughs> what a thing i don't understand <laughs> kill it kill it now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Kill it with fire and acid, Professor. I don't understand what he's saying. It needs to die. I can't talk it out of it. It's killing In the same kids. combat, which I think was the revelation that Squeak is a devil. It guys, killed Molly. Guys, it's okay. When he comes back, I'll just use calm emotions. <laughs> uh -huh. As long as you don't I use it on me again. Do. It's in the past. Are you still crying about your dead wife and kids? Move Bro, on. get over it. That was so we only, like two we days only ago. One of them. But speaking of your kids, where are they? Uh, <laughs> we need some more rubies. Because if they were eaten, I, I know I know a butcher. You can probably get them out. <laughs> oh, we're awful. Oh, yeah. Wait, that's we, completely unrelated to your if problem. If we turn around and track them, we can figure out where his kids are buried. Yeah. More rubies. Yeah, oh, that's so many more money. So much more money. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I feel like our characters have way stronger moral compasses than the players. <laughs> oh. oh, so tiny. <laughs> no. See, that looks different. <laughs> if I had seen that. <laughs> What? I just oh. plopped down a meanie. Yeah. Alright! Jason and I have places to be. There, I'm sure there will be no consequences for this. I mean, I mean his, literally his, told the consequences. His wife was easy, yeah, come on. <laughs> come back me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I deal with I deal with complicated situations with uh, with anxious humor. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, this okay. just means that Francesca has a really fun puzzle piece to work with to incorporate at the worst possible time for us. So yeah. yeah. <laughs>
I, I am. Um, I think you sucked up our minis again. I did. Goodbye, minis. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right. Thank you, everyone, for playing. Oh, thank you. That was Sid. a lot. Yeah, oh. thanks for playing, guys. That was a that was a great session. Whole bunch of all revelations. Right. Are we are we planning to play again on Tuesday? I guess uh, so. Yeah. So yeah. Have, yeah. So that we have the uh, the uh, recommended time to think about our deeds. <laughs> yeah. Forty eight um, hours, the same length it's been since we murdered his wife. Oh no. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna make an amazing summary, for sure. No problem there. Just do what I did and do everything. Okay. Yeah. Summary, Winter Road?